Greetings, everyone. I see y'all jolly on the spot. Let me turn my phone off. Um, all right. <clears throat> Greetings, everyone. This is Cassandra Faye Floyd, also known as the daughter of the Fates. Um, pull my shit together. All right. Okay, now that that is done. All right, my name is Cassandra Faye Floyd, also known as the daughter of the fates. And we got a lot to do. And I'm gonna tell you, I'm gonna warn you right up front. We are not going to do what we have done the, the last two lives that I was with y'all. I do not know why spirit came through the way that she did, but I am not going to be doing no six and seven hour live today. Okay. They were purposeful. They were necessary. They were good. But today we are not doing no six, seven hour um, live. Okay. Same. But I have a lot for you. And I have spent all day in preparation. Okay. So um, let's go. Greetings, everybody. Greetings. Coco Shea, Topanga, Nikki, Balance, Afrophysics. All right. Y'all come on in the room. So, okay. So today I am going to be talking to you about the... Uh, greetings, Tajali. I'm going to be talking to you about the thing that is on everybody's lips these days, which is the coming um, solar eclipse happening on April 8th, 2024. And I had wanted to take my time talking about this because I'll be honest, I really didn't know what my approach in this discussion was going to be. And I've spent about three days in kind of an unintentional wormhole. Greetings, Carlotta. I spent about the last, yeah, three days in an unintentional wormhole. Um, honestly, not knowing that this is what I was preparing for. I, it was just... This energy, this frequency, this vibe, this, I don't know, this connection that has been ever present really since that new moon in Pisces a few weeks ago, three or four weeks ago. And it was like, that was kind of like the, the you know, the gunfire at the, at the starting line. Because since that Pisces new moon has just been back to back to back to back radically in power, you know, powerful, impactful events. Right after that, you know, we had um, we had the equinox. And then right after that, days later, we had the blood moon. You feel me? We got this um, got this eclipse coming up. And um, there are several big astrological events in April, I just watched my favorite um, astrologer, Pam Gregory. Um, so I would encourage you guys to go on her site, Pam Get Gregory, go on her YouTube channel. But she was talking about how um, energetically April is probably going to be the biggest month of the year, just for in terms of the kind of astrological movements that are happening in April. Now, I want to take a little detour before I start going deep to do a little house cleaning. Those of you who are tuning in via IG, I would encourage you to either uh, watch via Facebook or actually, I won't even say that. I would encourage you to watch this live via YouTube. That way it always, you know, I'm always getting 
the um, watch hours, the likes, the subscriptions that I need through my YouTube channel. The second thing I will remind you of, I'm going to continue to remind you all of, is when you're watching this live, so there won't be any advertisements or anything like that. But when you are watching any of my videos on my YouTube channel, <laughs> y'all are already out the gate, yo. Okay, okay. When you are watching my YouTube channel, a very easy way to support the channel and when I mean support the channel, I mean support the channel, you know, economically. The easiest way to do that is to watch, is to let the ad advertisements, the advertisements, the ads play all the way through. Like that is how when people, I didn't know until I got, until my page got monetized, that that is the way that um, people can support is through allowing the ads to run all the way through. I know they're annoying. I get it. I have been in the past one that it will skip every single time. I did not know. So even now I am letting these ads run, even if I mute them and go on to do something else, we'll let the ads play out um, so that those, um, those content creators that I support, that is a very easy way for me to support them. So when you are watching anything on my YouTube channel, allow the ads to play all the way to the end. Okay. Um, also in preparation for this coming event, I really want to encourage you. I'm actually trying to build an appointment book. Hopefully I'll have that up tomorrow. Um, but I really want to encourage you to solicit my skills. I really want you to schedule your readings. We are literally right in the peak, like right in the, like in the ebb, in the dense ebb of our transition from the lunar eclipse to the solar eclipse. But we have been feeling the impact of this, this coming solar eclipse since the beginning of March. We will be, uh, we will be feeling the um, greetings, Lotus flower. We'll be feeling the impact of this solar eclipse um, heavily, densely for six months. But the impact of this solar eclipse will last 2.5 years. Um, so those, okay, so let me get back to my thing. The thing is, is this energy and it's back to back. And then all of these things, all of the, we're in a wood dragon year, you know, we're, um, you know, we're having all these major once in a lifetime events. We're experiencing all these major once in a lifetime astrological movements. The devil comet is this thing that everybody's talking about right now that's visible in the night sky. Um, and so these are all the potential of these events are magnified times a million because we are experiencing them within the context of America's first Pluto returns, which I've been talking to y'all about for the last four years. OK, so I am struggling with you. I am making a plea with you. Get these readings. I did a reading for this young man here at my place. It was a live reading. He came here and. The whole time I was like, sometimes I'd be dismayed up in here by <laughs> these readings. I know I'm supposed to have like a, a modicum amount of like control and decorum and stuff. But sometimes, not sometimes, every time I do a reading for people, I am amazed at the accuracy. I am amazed because it's different. You know, the reads have always been good and profound. But lately, they got off the chain. So get your reading. Schedule your reading. To do that, email me at releaseheartcenter at gmail.com. Releaseheartcenter at gmail.com. For those of you who are um, tuning in via Facebook, Twitch, or YouTube, I'm going to type it in the comment section, releaseheartcenter at gmail.com. So email me, put reading in the subject header. I will send you an email detailing the types of readings that I do. I also do nutrition, complete wellness consultations from a five elements theory perspective. So you can get that too. So I will send you a list of the things that I offer through this medium, like you would be, you would be having a zoom, you would be getting a zoom reading unless you live here in the area. Okay. I will give you the prices, 
how that can happen or whatever. For I can go ahead and tell you the price for a thirty minute um, for a thirty minute reading or consult. It's going to be eighty eighty five dollars for a one hour reading or consult. It's one hundred and fifty dollars for the wellness consult that will also um, accompany a typed out um, a typed out assessment and recommendations, nutritional recommendations, um, exercise and lifestyle recommendations and an explanation of your diagnosis. Okay. Any herbal recommendations, anything like that. So, and that will be delivered to you within five to seven days after your consult. If you do a nutritionist, a whole wellness consult with me. Okay. That's the rundown. Those of you, even if you are tuning in live right now, there are ways because my page is finally monetized for you to send shout outs that you should be able to see across the bottom of your screen. If you're tuning in live via YouTube, um, you know, like little icons that you can hit and there are amounts attached to each icon, like, like a dollar or like $2 or like $5 or whatever. Do that. Do that. You feel me? Um, greetings, Bra uh, Brahmana, Brahmana Bhava. Um, so these are the ways that you can support. I've told you guys too, uh, a couple of days ago, that you can order jewelry for me, custom made. I had somebody order a pair of segment earrings, like the ones I was sporting the other day. So you can also support by purchasing your um, your jewelry from me. That is uh, www. Let me just type that out too. www. Daughter of the Fates. Etsy. Com. And the turnaround time is pretty quick on that. So like she ordered those earrings, I think Thursday, I shipped them out today. So, um, okay. So that's the ways that you can support, but I really, 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 really want to encourage you to get these readings, get yourself a 30 minute reading right now, especially since I came out of that, that ritual on the equinox, baby, I'm telling you the shit has been deep. Like we just had our summation meeting about that equinox retreat and it was radical and it was impactful far beyond what I imagined. So, and, and I'm like wide open since we got out of the desert from that retreat. So um, I'll be giving you details within the next week or so about the, um, the summer retreat that we're organizing for the summer solstice. We've already started planning that. Um, and so I'll be giving you the details about that once I finalize some things in a week or so. OK, that's that housekeeping. So get your reading release heart center at gmail dot com. Get your reading release heart center at gmail dot com. Get your reading release heart center at gmail dot com. April is huge. We gonna talk about it a little bit in here, but I'll be honest. I'm going ahead and move into subject. I was saying before I started talking about the housekeeping, how I really was not sure about the approach that I was going to take in talking about this. It's been on the lips of everybody. As soon as you Google April 8th solar eclipse, you get bombarded with a myriad of unlimited conspiracy theories, with a myriad of freaking Bible verses about the end of days and the rapture of the church and the this and the this and the this and the this and the this, the omens and the signs and the symptoms chat. It, it's that. I spent all day to day waiting through that shit. You feel me? And um, and people, and then that is that is complicated. That already conspiracy, you know, um, all things bad, end of the days, end of times, doom and gloom, whatever, whatever shit is um also complicated or magnified, if you will, by the fact that. Um, especially in the path of totality, there are chronic news broadcasts um, happening. I mean, even the sister told me the other night, she just saw a news broadcast and she lives here in California about uh, people needing to go out and buy water and get supplies and make sure you have food for a few days. Then FEMA just did this thing about, you know, um, crisis control and, and all of this type of shit. And, um, I told y'all, I've been telling y'all for a long time. You feel me? Yeah, I know a lot of, thank you, Topanga. I know a lot of schools are closing. I know um, I saw this article today about because of traditionally how they handle eclipses. And we've talked about this in the past when we went through that solar eclipse in October, 
about how um, and did, uh, tr reservations and tribes along the path of totality uh, are closing their schools. They've been announcing that there will not be school on that day, that their businesses on the reses will not be open that day. It's a it's a thing. You feel me? It's a big thing. And I, you know, there are some things because I took, I don't know, a gang of notes. I don't know a gang of notes. I don't know a gang of notes. I got a gang of notes. And so the conspiracy theory aspect of this stuff is fascinating to me. I took a lot of notes about that stuff, none of which I'm going to talk to you about today. OK, uh, some things I'm going to bring up, but not in a conspiratorial kind of way. Right. Um, because they're fascinating to me. They're interesting to me because they they kind of connect dots and they kind of weed weave webs for me. But I'm going to tell you, we as I uh, as. <laughs> to thank a girl. <laughs> Look, you that came out the gate wilding, okay? She says the first thing she said, we wasn't even up on here six minutes, girl. Uh, I went down the rabbit hole too. Red heifers sacrificing altars, Israel, Palestine, the eight being the number of karma, the year of the dragon, etc. I've been needing this talk with somebody. <laughs> I promise you, it will not disappoint, baby. I promise. Uh, so watch while I listen. I'll watch while I'm cooking. Uh, so I can't hit the skip. <laughs> Yo, okay. Out the gate wilding. All right. Hold on. Let's see. Like how the sun's supposed to go easy. Uh, let's go. Oh, go east to west. But for some reason, uh, it's going through Mexico, then to Ohio. School's closed on that day. Uh, anyone heard the eclipse? is apparently serious. Listen, yes, y'all, goddamn. I just told y'all there ain't, there ain't, there ain't but about 10,000 different YouTube channels you can go to right now to give you all the conspiracy theory shit you need. That ain't what we here for. Now, I there are a few of these conspiracies I will address within the context of what our title is today, a glorious conspiracy, a glorious conspiracy. Okay. That's what we're going to do. So a couple of things I want to do. One, this was actually around the time of the, uh, in preparation for, as a matter of fact, the solar eclipse that we just experienced on October 14th. Uh, no, was it October? No, it was November 11th. We did October 14th was the eclipse, but this conspiracy that I'm going to read to you, we developed on 11 11 because that is the anniversary of the Temple of Evolutionary Emergence, and it is also Veterans Day. And so I was like, we need to counter the conspiracy created on Veterans Day with creating our own conspiracy. So I'm gonna read that to you first, and then. I'm going to probably make this part of the intro that I do. Like the, you know, how some people will have an official intro. Like when I used to do um, colonialism is bad for your health. <laughs> and I used to do the show colonialism is bad for your health. I would read um, point number one of our 14 point working platform as the introduction for the show. So this might very well end up serving as the introduction for my, whenever I do whatever, you feel me? But this is the conspiracy. It's still in works, but this is what I have so far. I, and you place your name. Let's see. Also, I am that young man that emailed you and wanted to put face to the email. Oh, thank you. That's what's up, Mike. Yes, I remember. I remember. Okay. Um, I, Cassandra Faye Floyd, as a peculiar expression of the almighty, the divine she, the great cosmic mother, I am joining in breath with my global family to conspire on behalf of the whole made well. We are breathing these words together to ensure that our home, her body, is restored to her original perfect glory. Her glory is perfect in peace, love, bliss, happiness, and ecstasy. This world exists because we collectively will it so. 
We, as the representatives of the mother's reign on earth, speak this beautiful conspiracy as a single cosmic earthly, single cosmic earthly orchestra to guarantee heaven on earth in joyful compliance with our mother's will, with our mother's divine will. Possessing the power of our mothers, we welcome this glorious future now. It is, it is certainly as we speak, mommy and I are one. Mm-hmm, 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 mm-hmm. That's the conspiracy. That's the conspiracy. And I'm going to start reading that before we ever do anything else, right? So that's the conspiracy uh, drafted by myself on behalf of the Temple of Evolutionary Emergence, okay? That's the first thing I want to do. The second thing I want to do, I'm moving fast because I got a lot to talk to y'all about. Second thing I want to do, as evidence of what I just said earlier in promoting the need, the necessity for you to get your readings. Get your readings because all your readings come with homework. It's not just some shit to make you feel good. Every time I give a reading, you got homework, okay? Get your readings, okay? So today I decided to do a short pull for the temple. After I read this young man, it was so powerful. I was like, you know what? Let me go ahead and grab a couple of cards for the temple. You feel me? Bay. The cards that fell. I am still beside myself. All right. So I'm going to show you each card. But all four cards that I pulled on behalf of the temple are arrows cards. Are arrows cards. They're of the suit of the arrows. Now, the suit of the arrows in the traditional deck is the swords. The purpose and the energy of these cards is the same. The sword is an, a dually functioning instrument. The sword can, in the hands of the Maleficent, be an instrument of oppression. The sword, in the hands of the Beneficent, functions to defend, to protect life, to defend from the Maleficent. You feel me? The sword in its analogy in this in this reading in this card is synonymous as an anagram with the power of your tongue with the power of words words are swords with dual function words are swords they can heal or they can kill they can harm or they can help they can create beauty or they can create despair. Words are swords. So in the suit of arrows, which is the swords in the traditional deck. See, a lot of people see the swords cards and they're like, oh my God. Because typically in the traditional deck, they come out as like warnings, right? But in this deck, it is about these, these swords are treated as arrows. You are directing that energy of the words. You are directing that energy of the vision that you can produce with those words. The way that you can wield words to create something in the material realm, that's what the arrow suit represents. And the thing about an arrow, just like with a sword, it is it is a mere image of what is happening in the heart of that of that person who wields it. The heart of the person that wields the arrows, that holds the swords, is going to determine its impact. Is it impact? Is its impact going to be detrimental? Is its impact going to be beneficial to the group? You feel me? So I love this suit. I love the arrows, right? And the arrows represent the energy of the um, the element that the arrows represents is the element of air. It's the element of air, right? And so here you go. I say, okay, shuffle, shuffle, mix, mix. I'm going to do a four-card pull. All four cards are from the suit of arrows, are from the suit of arrows. So I was like, come on in the room, Nia Spirit. You got something to say about our words. You have something to say about the vision that we are being called to create. You got something to say. And I'm here for it. So let's go ahead and move through these cards fast. You're not, you're not late, Crystal. You're always on time, boo. Always on time. Okay. 
So I'm going to go ahead and move to this, this little four card read. This is the four card read for the Temple of Evolutionary Emergence. Whatever applies to you, keep it. Own it. Do something with it. If it don't apply to you, don't blink. Move on to the next thing. You feel me? Now, I tell you, whenever I do a reading, there's homework attached to it. So most diviners will tell you that no matter what style of divination you receive, that you should make a conscious act in the direction of the read within seven days. Within seven days of receiving the reading, take some identical step in the direction of what came down for you in the read. So that's what I'm telling you. This read, y'all ain't ready for. It's so good. Okay. So the first card, I'll show it to my YouTubers first, YouTube, Facebook, Twitch, is called The Apprentice of Arrows. Okay. So just look at the card for a minute. You've got them pointing towards the sun. She is showing him the way. He is drawing the arrow. And then you see a phoenix, like a spiritual phoenix in the midst. You see how the rays are coming up behind them. There's a lot going on in the imagery of this card. Now I'll show it to those on IG. The card is the apprentice of arrows. Beautiful card. This card. <laughs> this card is my favorite card in the deck. The whole, and I got a bunch of favorite cards, but if I had to choose one, this is one of my three bigs. This is one of my three bigs. I love this card. You see, listen, there's so much going on in this card, y'all. It's, it's not an accident. It's not, in, it's not, listen, I'm getting goosebumps everywhere. It is, it is a sign of what we've been talking about for some time, that she is the black woman as the mentor and is this white male child as the mentee. There's a lot going on in this here card that we about to talk about. The name of this card, The Apprentice of Arrows, is called Brave Herald of New Thought. Brave Herald of New Thought. Now, typically, I just give you the interpretation for the card, but this card is my favorite card of the day. As a matter of fact, I wrote next to it, Oya. The whole energy of this card is Oya all over as soon as I take. So I'm going to read the card to you because it is magnanimous. Okay. Brave Herald of New Thought. Each, each minor arcana comes with a prayer that precedes it. So I am going to read you the prayer and the message for this card. Listen, the prayer is, I speak words that affirm the positive. I write in words that speak the truth, knowing that the truth is the underlying goodness within creation and anything less than wondrous is false. Anything less than wondrous is false. I dismiss all thoughts of I can't and feelings that I am not responsible. I throw off whatever limits my good and the good of those around me. I see beauty and I speak to beauty. I see love and I speak to love. Where I cannot see these things, I supply them. Listen to what I'm trying to tell you on this day. If I stop right there, that, that's the read. Where I do, I see beauty and I speak to beauty. I see love and I speak to love. Where I cannot see these things, I supply them. Where I cannot see love and beauty, I supply them. Bravely, I go forth and change the words that cause harm and grief and hunger. I change the laws. That's all y'all, baby. I change the limits. That's all y'all, baby. I review concepts and remind myself. I recreate a better place to play. I am a messenger bringing new thoughts that are the seeds of freedom. With the words you give me, great spirit, the young shall be liberated, the world radically transformed. 
Can y'all come on in the room like I'm uh, like is service we having today? Okay, the lesson for the card. Your words live forever in the hearts and minds of seven generations. We hear this. We've known this. Your words live forever in the hearts and minds of seven generations. That's why I started with the conspiracy. Your words live forever in the hearts and minds of seven generations. Speak in such a way that their minds can develop images of better ways. Now, let me tell you. Let me tell you about this car, y'all. I'm always talking about, I'm always saying verbatim, the, perp, the, the, the responsibility of the artist is to change the world. The, the world will be radically transformed primarily by artists, every kind of artist, graffiti artists, musicians, poets, you name it, the, the gamut, dancers, whatever. The way that they are able to change the world and especially the world we are attempting to construct right? Is what am I always saying? We have to speak. What am I always, what's the name of this, this thing? The glorious conspiracy. We have to speak the glorious conspiracy so that artists are informed with the vision that they can execute and so that the many can grab onto that no one can create that which they cannot imagine. If they cannot see it in their mind's eye, they cannot create it. I was talking to you a couple of months ago about that. That's why, that is why for the last 100 years, there have been 2,739 motherfucking horror movies made. It is because we they are constantly trying to make it so that we cannot imagine a better way. Constantly trying to proliferate our brain space with information that will make it impossible for us to see a future that is worth living. Seeing a world where all are well, not just making it, all are abundantly well. That's what this shit serves. It's our responsibility to counter that, not get caught up. That's why I say it. Even though I walk down these wormholes and this bullshit about conspiracies about uh, April 8th, I said, that's not the shit I'm delivering today. Today, I am delivering a glorious conspiracy. This is the role of the artist. This is the role of the orator. This is the role of the, of the filmmaker is to use what the mother is saying coming through her children, her oracles, her sibyls. Take what the mother is saying and transform it into images and sounds and feelings that people can pull into them. And it change their consciousness. It changes how they dream. It changes how they see. And now crystal clear in their consciousness, they can see all the ways that people are actively trying to, quote, solve problems in the world. And they can begin to weave this into their consciousness as the way to shape this future. Do you understand what I'm saying? Y'all rocking with me? This card says, I pulled this card 30 minutes before I got on this call. This card says, your words live forever in the hearts and minds of seven generations. Why is that important? What the fuck are you saying? Are you repeating? Are you repeating the ails of the past? Are you using your powerful throat chakra? Are you using the powerful energy, the ashe that comes out of your mouth to recreate the ails of the past? Or are you speaking a glorious conspiracy into reality? Your words live forever in the hearts and minds of seven generations. So speak in such a way that their minds can develop images of better ways. And guiding anyone, particularly youth, make sure your words assist their becoming self-responsible, capable, and caring. Listen to the needs of the developing soul of the student just as you have been listened to by the ever-present guiding beings who stand by you in total love. Encourage the expression of highest self in all beings. Point the way. Listen, look at, look at this woman, the brave herald of new thought. Point the way to this future that is certain to come. That's what the phoenix represents. 
The phoenix represents resurrection. The phoenix represents immortality. I got a word for y'all today. I'm trying to tell y'all I got a word for y'all today. The phoenix represents immortality. The phoenix represents resurrection. It represents the inevitability of evolution. That's what the phoenix represents. The inevitability of evolution. That's what she represents. What do they say about the phoenix? That when she when she cries, her tears can heal all wounds. You understand? She represents the inevitable, the inevitability of evolutionary emergence, baby. That's what she represents. Okay. It says, um, let's see. Okay. Point the way by your life and action. Point the way by your life and actions. You will return to life in the world you have given your children. You will return to life, the phoenix, in the world that you have given your children. Teach that all can be transformed. Teach, teach that all can be transformed. The young have come to correct the errors of your generation. Give them the skills to do so. Stop talking shit about Gen Z's. Stop talking shit about millennials. Stop talking shit about your babies. Stop talking shit about young people. Stop it. Support, embolden young people so that they, because they got the energy, baby. They got the enthusiasm. They got the energy and they got the rebellious ways that ensure one, this shit that we, we want to see in can never rise again. And two, that they have the energy and the enthusiasm to create the world we say that we want to see made real. Stop slandering babies. Stop criminalizing young people. Stop talking about Gen Z's don't want to work. No, they don't want to work because they can see even as our old asses can't that there is a future in store for us where we do not have to be defined by burdensome labor. Okay? They got the courage we didn't have. They have the fucking gumption that we didn't have. So give them, what does she say? Teach that all can be transformed. The young have come to correct the errors of your generation. Give them the skills to do so. They are hope. Give them faith in themselves. Inspire courage in them. Share the wisdom that has helped you on your own path and the wisdom that you have developed as a consequence. Point the way. Encourage harmonious action in them. There is a child somewhere awaiting the knowledge you hold. Come on in the room, spirit. Woo! Mm, come on in the room on this day, baby. This, that's just card one in this reading that I pulled for the temple today, baby. This is number one card. You understand? This is the number one card. Somebody asked, what is the deck that I'm reading from? This is the medicine woman in her guidebook. This is the medicine woman in her guidebook. Baby, spirit did not come here to play today. Okay. I took off work. I had myself booked all day to, to rub on white people's asses, to do massages all day. I was like, you know what? Let me just turn this goddamn app off because she got something for you up in here today. So yeah, so listen, book your readings. Releaseheartcenter at gmail.com. Email me, put reading in the top or consult in the top. Releaseheartcenter at gmail.com. Get your 30 minute or your one hour reading. Get your, uh, get your whole wellness um, consultation. Next card. Babe, <laughs> this next card. This card is not my favorite. I, I just showed y'all my favorite. The, the, but this is this is up there. This up there. This card is called the Teaching Lodge of the Arrows. I'm gonna show it to you guys on YouTube, Facebook, and Twitch first. The Teaching Lodge of the Arrows. So you see the same woman from the first card, the black woman. And all gold, because you know that's Oshun energy up in there. You feel me? Looking outside the lodge, you can see that they're inside the lodge, but the light of the sun is what? Above head. And she is uh, surrounded on all sides by a spiritual family. Okay? For those of you on IG, it is the teaching lodge of the arrows. The Teaching Lodge of the Arrows. 
Coco, Coco Shay, you said, please connect with me. Um, I don't know people IG handle. Who are you? I know. I'm sure we know each other, but who are you? Let me know in the comments or hit me up via messenger. So teaching lodge of the arrows. Okay. That's the second card. You feel me? Um, I told you every card that I pulled came from the arrow suit. So spirit has something to say today. The teaching lodge of the arrows. The name of the card is the liberator. <laughs> the first card is the brave herald of new thought. The second card is the liberator. You feel me? And, um, Mm hmm. Yup. 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 Child, listen. <laughs> this is a preparation card. This whole read is preparation, baby. Let me just tell you before I even talk to you about the rest of the cards. This whole read is a preparation. There is a reason that on my busiest day of the week, Saturday, I woke up this morning saying, "I'm not going to take clients today. I got to get up on the internet and prep people." Today is March 30th. Today is March 30th. April is going to be the most radical month of this year, at least, you know, cosmologically. There's huge shit happening the entire month. Plus, there is one conspiracy I am going to mention within the context of what's happening in April. OK, that we that I didn't even know about until I was researching today. And we need to know about it. We need to know about it. But this whole month is going to be stupendously, unbelievably, globally transforming and radical this month. So get your fucking readings done. If you don't want to get a reading with me, I'll have an attitude about it, but that's fine. Go to where you need to go to get a reading. If you've never had your birth chart done, go and have your damn birth chart done this month. This read that just fell on today is a preparation. Every single card is a preparation. The whole, I've pulled four cards out of a well-shuffled deck. All arrows. All arrows. All arrows. So even though I'm telling you that the arrows, the, air, the energy of the arrows represents the swords, which is an anagram for words, it also can be taken literally in terms of being prepared, being ready, and being, being deliberate in how you are shaping your future. This is the future that they're all looking towards in the lodge. This is the future that they're all looking towards in the lodge. You feel me? Now, in um in native tradition, the lodge, the sweat lodge, the anipi, the home, these are all symbolic of the womb. The womb, and the reason they're symbolic of the womb is because within the womb is everything that we need. We do not need, we don't have to be outside of it. Everything that we need, we have when we are in the womb. Comfort, nutrition, um everything that we need is within the womb. So whenever you hear someone talking about the spiritual significance of the lodge, the lodge in uh the lodge in the suit is synonymous with um the night. Okay, the night in um, whatever the night is, whether it's a night sword, blah, 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 it's the energy of the night. The lodge, whenever you think about the lodge or whenever you hear about the lodge in the suit, it is about your immediate space, whether that's the family, the lodge that you've created within your family, like your chosen family, your spiritual family, whether it is your actual physical surroundings. And I'm going to say something about that to you because we also are still within the, the energy of this equinox that we just came out of this blood moon that we just came out of intensified by this coming, this coming solar eclipse. So, you know, I talked to you guys the other night, you know, being able to, you know, create the lodge within your own immediate surroundings. That's why we do spring cleaning every culture on earth. Spring cleaning is a thing. It's a ritual that we do to, shake the snow off of, you know, the winter season, prepare to bring warmth and energy and the free flowing of energy back into our surroundings, right? So the te the teaching lodge of the arrows, baby. Um, am I going to read the prayer? Yes. Yes, yes, yes. I'm going to read the prayer for this card too. I'm going to read the whole card. I don't typically do this, but there's a word for today. The prayer. 
I, uh, in the name of harmony and peace, I live. I am the one who speaks. I have studied the great warriors, the peacemakers, those who freed slaves and those who stood their own ground. Woo! I am learning the themes of their lives and making them my own. Listen to the word up in here, y'all. Listen to the word up in here today. Thank you, uh, Brahmana Bhava. In the name of harmony and peace, I live. I am the one who speaks. I have studied the great warriors, the peacemakers, and those who freed slaves and those who stood their own ground. I am learning the themes of their lives and making them my own. I am learning from revolutionary women and evolutionary men the very qualities that gave them undying spirit. I am gathering to myself the knowledge that I too can draw on the great mind. In my life, I will correct an injustice. I will right a wrong. Come on in the room. Listen, I listen. In my life, I will create. I will correct an injustice. I will right a wrong. I will bring love where none has been known. What did the first card say? I see love and I speak to love. I see beauty and I speak to beauty. Where I do not see these things, I create them. Where I do not see these things, I bring them. Here she say, I will bring love where none has been known. I attune myself to the sound of truth and I listen until I am known. The lesson for the card. Now this, this actually is a wonderful card, the liberator card. It is time to put yourself in the company of great minds. Listen, y'all. It is time for you to put yourself in the company of great minds, whether through books, films, or person to person. Surround yourself with a heroic presence. Read the words of those who mastered life. Listen to music that fills you with a pot with positive visions. Let poetry enter and inspire you. This is the lesson of the card, baby. Delete from your reality all sounds and images that bring you down, at least in your personal space. Surround yourself with visual, auditory, and sensory experiences that uplift you. Create your own teaching lodge of arrows. No bad news here. No television, no newspapers, no magazines that do not support your highest visions and aspirations. It is time to create, at least in your own small space, a completely inspiring environment, and then welcome the goddess. <sighs> Are y'all in the room? I need to see hand claps. I need to see snaps. I need to, I need to see a raise the roof, something. Do you hear this? Especially as we are in the spring equinox that is challenging. It's been kicking my ass because I ain't cleaned my space yet. Every day I say, okay, I'm going to clean my place. Every day I'm going to clean my place. I ain't cleaned my place yet. You feel me? This energy says, do it now. Create your own teaching lodge of the arrows. Be deliberate in channeling the energy around you so that it fills you. What does it say? It fills you. It builds you. The lodge, she said, read it again. The lodge restores you. It emboldens you. It nourishes you, just like your mama womb. It nourishes you. It protects you. It grounds you. You understand? Do this. Create an environment for yourself. Because I'm going to tell you, I, I told y'all I've been in a wormhole for about three days. All these conspiracies, all the things about April 8th, and I... Put them, I placed them accordingly, but I step right up in here and say, y'all ain't getting that. Y'all are only going to get from me a glorious conspiracy that you can fully participate in. That's what y'all getting from me. Leave the noise to someone else to do. Leave the noise for someone else to, to take in. All right. Okay. Uh, she says she want me to read it again. Delete from your reality, the sounds and images that bring you down, at least in your personal space, surround yourself with visual, auditory, and sensory experiences that uplift. Create your own teaching lodge of the arrows. 
no bad news, no television, no newspapers, no magazines that do not support your highest aspirations. It is time to create, at least in your own small space, a completely inspiring environment and then welcome the goddess. Huh? Who? Listen, that's the teaching lodge of arrows. Let me look at, hold on. Can I see what that is? Okay. All right, that's the teaching lodge of arrows, y'all. Listen. Yes. The next card. Equally powerful. <laughs> Equally powerful. Um, let's see him. Yeah. <laughs> this is the 10 of arrows. Wait, let me show it to y'all quick light. You see, pay attention to the images. You see? Everybody around the table, look at what's going on in the background. You see the spirits present there? You see the broken broken arrow at the top of the screen? All right, for those of you on YouTube, Facebook, Twitch, and such, um, you see, whenever you see these little, what look like little cave, cro magnon cave drawings and stuff, this is always a representation right up here in the top corner for those of you from IG. That is a representation of our connection to the very ancient, to the old. So in the background, you see you've got your immediate ancestors, spiritual people in the background. You've got, look at around, sit, sitting around the table. You've got the whole world represented around the table. There's a little white baby there. There's a there's an African woman dressed like Oshun there. You understand? They look like indigenous people from the Americas indigenous people from other places. You got elderly people at the table. Everybody's represented at the table. I'll show that to y'all one more time. They seem to be holding hands. You feel me? Okay. This The name of this card is Steadfast Mind. Steadfast Mind. Uh, the great cosmic consummation taking place April. Uh, April 8th, um, having developed my body, taking charge of my thoughts and risen above the struggle of life, I am in command. I fully accept my leadership role. My training is complete. Now I can wear the cloak of success where all can freely view me. It is in this role that others may criticize, envy, and attempt to overthrow my power. This is a warning card, but it's still not the way that you would, you, you know, we've come to recognize warning cards. It is in this role that others may criticize, envy, or attempt to overthrow my power, but I lead in confidence, knowing that if I keep my eye on the goal and my heart in your hands, great spirit, I cannot fail. I am centered in peace and my will is my power. My shield is my positive thought. My still mind keeps me from all disruption. Thanks be to those lessons that I have been given. That's the prayer. The lesson for the card is false friends cannot harm you. Though your ego may feel attacked, your philosophy will see you through. Your leadership will be resisted. Every positive idea you have ever had is being met with equal and negative force, but hold steady. You have come a long way to develop your belief system. You have probably reached a point where you thought you had it all together. This current resistance by others may be an unexpected turn of events, but your true will shine, your true self will shine through. Everything unnecessary will fall away, including false friends. Hold to your truth. Stand fast in love. You may feel humbled in your ego. Your ego self may not like what is happening. But do not give way to anger, resentment, and thoughts of a lower nature. Your target is always God realization, not revenge. The warrior's path is straight and clear. She simply does not waver from the good. Woo! Listen. She simply does not waver from the good. <laughs> this way. This. Woo! So listen. Don't nobody bring me no bad news. No bad news. Come on, come on, come on. <laughs> For you young folks who do not know, I'm about to, I'm about to share that comment. Uh, 
for those young, those babies who it's funny how this movie keeps coming up lately. And I keep being dismayed about how many young folks ain't never seen the whiz. Like who your parents is, who your people's like, where your people's at? Like, how can they have done such a humanitarian, humanitarian disservice to you that you have not watched the whiz? I don't understand it. You can't make it make sense. I do not understand. It's come up a lot this week, so I may need to rewatch it. Um, but that this at the bottom of the screen is a quote. Don't nobody bring me no bad news. No bad news. That's my jam. Anyway, okay. So the Ten of Arrows, I really respect this card whenever it falls. Because let me tell you what happened this morning. This morning I woke up, you know, dumb scrolling on IG first thing. And the first thing that I saw was like a, an announcement that Lizzo had made on her IG account about it was really it was really sad. It was really demoralizing. It was basically saying, you know, all I've ever wanted to do is make music that makes people happy, that makes people feel good. That's all I've ever wanted to do is bring joy through music. And she says, it does not matter what I do. I am overwhelmed by people's hatred of me. It doesn't matter what I do. It doesn't matter if I lose weight, people hate. If I gain weight, people hate. People. Have, she was just talking about how much violent vitriol people continue to spill on her and how she can't take no more. And she said something to the effect of, as of today, I quit. And she, you know, did the deuces up. And I was like, that shit, that shit hurt my feelings. It really did. I like, I love Lizzo. I'm not going to lie. I love her. And I've seen over the years how this it's it's timely. It's it's timely that all of these cards, all these eras cards fell because that's how it started the day it was just like, damn, you know, this girl, first of all, she's still a baby. She's so young. You understand? And to be to 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 be in the eye, you know, of the many and to have so many feel confident enough to outwardly express their hatred, their rage towards, to shoot that kind of energy towards that, that young, that young woman. And, um, you know, and for how, yeah, I get it. You know, you gotta, you know, put your hater blockers on and all that shit, but energy is impactful and people can feel it. And I felt her this morning. It, that was how my day started. I was like, damn, that that's really fucked up. This girl is amazing. And I've seen how, so I'm I'm a black female. So what may not be apparent to others, I have seen a radical shift in her energy from when she first, you know, became big. I've seen a shift in her energy, even in her facial expressions from her first album to now. When she first hit the the scene with that cute little video, what was it? Um, shoot. I just took a DNA test. Con wait, found out. Wait, I just took a DNA test. Con Turns out I'm a hundred percent that bitch. Even when I'm crying crazy, yeah, I got boy problems. That's a human in me. Listen, her confidence was crazy. It was so, it was so refreshing, and it was like genuine and honest. Go back and watch them first two, two or three videos off that album, and then go back and watch the most recent videos that she's done. You can see that something has changed in her spirit and it is in response to this energy that she is receiving from so many. You know what I'm saying? And unfortunately, she doesn't have the understanding or the information that would help arm her, which would let her know that that's what comes when God reveals herself and her, ha her ass has the audacity to be black and female. That is what the blowback is going to be when God has the audacity to reveal herself in the body of a big black woman and squad up. You feel me? So unfortunately, she's not armed with that information. I told you I did a whole lot about the vitriol I got when I did that, um, that damn video on black female power being confused with masculinity and child, they opened up the floodgates on my ass. As soon as I saw one unkind word, blip, bot, uh, bitch block, bitch block, you ain't about to disturb my motherfucking peace on some dumb shit, baby. I know you're still an infant. I know you're still an infant. You understand in your understanding, but you ain't about to disrupt my motherfucking peace. You feel me? And so 
Anyway, I just, let's see, uh, Coco Shea says, I just finished reading the Sybil's eye opening. This message is timely for people, for, uh, timely. Our people need more. That was what people were crying out for. Absolutely, yes. So anyway, the reason I bring that up in terms of the Ten of Arrows is I love when this card falls, whether it's for me or whether it's readings that I do for others, because sometimes we need the reminder. We need the reminder that if we can see it, if we if we can see a thing coming, that's what I said. This whole this whole spread was a preparation spread. If we can see things coming, if we know the inevitability, especially that comes in people's conditioning, people's conditioning is what has them de deny the face of God in black women. People's conditioning is what has them uncomfortable in their flesh in the presence of a powerful woman. People's conditioning is what does that. And the deconstructing of conditioning, this is going to be the blowback. As long as you keep yourself focused and, and don't have the knee jerk response to want to box a bitch who you know is an infant. Oh, poor Tink Tink. That's my attitude. Or some people, they can get a slick word, but most people is like, oh, poor Tink Tink. I, sh I sh jostle them gently. I let them know that they were, they offended, but to like go toe to toe or like, you know, well, I don't do that. I stay in what I'm trying to do. I stay present in what it is I'm trying to do. What is it I'm trying to do? Be the brave herald of new thought. That's what I'm trying to do. I am trying to be the wise say, the sage, uh, the wise sage, uh, self-expressed, uh, mastering the art of words, self-expressed. You understand? I'm trying to be the brave herald of new thought. And I can't get on your level and expect you to see bigger. I can't be where you at on the ground and, and, teach you that there's something more, that there's something better. I can't get down and dirty with you if I'm going to teach you that there's something better, that there is a future that is right. We right literally on the precipice of, you feel me? That's what this card warns. That's why the 10 of arrows has, who is the brave herald, baby? It's the black woman from the card that we just read, the apprentice of arrows, the brave, God damn it. The brave hair. I don't even know how that happened. The brave herald of new thought. They're all centered around her. See, she's the focus of attention in this car. And everybody is around her. You see, everybody holding hands. Everybody is around her. She's got her ancient ancestors here in the corner. She got her immediate ancestors and spirits. You know, they got the seven stars over her head. Look at that. The seven stars are over her head. She is the brave herald of new thought. This black woman in the center of the table of many. Look at that. She is the brave herald of new thought, teaching from the first card, teaching the young the way forward. Look at this. She is the brave herald of new thought, guided by the resurrective spirit and energy, the, uh, the evolutionary emergent energy of the phoenix. She is the herald of brave new thought, and she has corralled the whole community around her to protect her to cover her, to nurture her. She is shrouded by the ancestors and cosmic energy over her head. That's where it is. It's over her head. And everybody has come together around her to ensure that her vision is made real. This, this her brave herald of new thought, this pointer to the way, this pointer to the way that she is. And she got everybody on day. She got everybody on day. So the whole purpose of this card, and look at this. What do we say? Creating a space, creating a lodge where no bad news can enter, where no bad energy can enter, where no ill intentions can enter. What, what was our second card? It was the teaching lodge of the arrows. Here she is in the center again, pointing the way to an inevitable future. What do we say? Pointing the way to a glorious conspiracy. That's what she doing. And what does she do? She calls on her spiritual family to enter the lodge, to support her in the lodge, to ensure that this new future, this glorious conspiracy is certain. That's what she's done in this reading. She said, everybody on deck because they're going to be haters 
There are going to be people shooting ill intentions. People going to be trying my stilo left and right. What does she say? People going to criticize, envy, and attempt to overthrow my power. People going to be all up in my shit attempting to sabotage what the fuck it is I'm doing. But y'all know me. Spirit knows my intentions. She has placed a crown of seven stars on my goddamn dome to ensure my success. And my primary motivation is the good of the whole. The good of the whole. She said your target is God realization. You can't be invested in revenge, boo. Your path is bigger than many can see right now. Squad up because people going to test you. That's why the name of the card is Steadfast Mind. Be steadfast in what it is your destiny is, what it is your purpose is, and squad up so that these negative things that come to you, you have a healthy lodge, a, a teaching lodge of the arrows surrounding you to fortify, protect you while you on this mission. They protecting you while you leading them. Hmm? And while you leading them, you demonstrating the way forward. This is a reciprocal relationship that she's involved in. They trust her because they know the future that she is giving them is certain. So they support, they cover, they protect. Is this sounding familiar to y'all? In the occurrences of the last three weeks with me, is this sounding familiar to y'all? The Anipi as the mother's womb, her spiritual family as those who trust the vision that is divinely given. Trust the vision that is divinely given, the crown of seven stars placed on her head. All of the ancestors saying, yes, this is what it is. The phoenix saying it is certain. The future is certain. The evolutionary emergence future is certain. Now you can, you can work against it and make your struggle more difficult, or you can get on board and recognize the ease with which the certain the, the certainty that we are creating will not harm won't, won't be harmful. You won't have you won't hurt. Because if you listen, if you evolution is is evolution is inevitable. There ain't no negotiating with evolution. Evolution is inevitable. It's happening all the time, whether you will it to or not, whether you want it to or not. You have a decision in the evolutionary process. You can buck against it because you hate change. You hate things that are unfamiliar. You hate evolution. And that will make your life burned, weighed down, painful. Or you can relax into the certainty that this thing unfolds on at the mother's will. And all she wills for us is a future that is bountiful. Let go of the shit of the past, baby. Last card. I, I said it was going to, wasn't going to take long, but I guess I lied. You feel me? The last card is again from the arrow suit. It is the exemplar of the arrows. It is the exemplar of the arrows. I love this card. <laughs> the name of this card, the exemplar of the arrows. The name of this card is the master storyteller. <laughs> the exemplar of the arrows is the master storyteller. So look at everything that's going on. See the tapestry in her lap? Look at what's on the tapestry. Look at what's on the tapestry. The images on the tapestry. This card is let's see can you can you slow it down but you can't uh you can slow it down but you can't prevent it you can't even slow it down uh, listen even the shit that we're going through baby you had me tell it it was a, a, a cyclical inevitability meant to show the human race something to allow them to evolve that's all you understand now, i know people don't want to hear that let's see a difficult task this work is for the collective consciousness. We can't deny it anymore. That's right. Okay. So let's talk about the master storyteller, the exemplar of the arrows. And then that's going to be the end of the read. And then we're going to go into what I wanted to talk to y'all about. But I had to throw this, I had to throw this bow today. You feel me? All right. I'm going to read this whole card too, just because. 
uh, and it's a short one anyway. It's a short one too. The prayer. I love this prayer. Once upon a time, listen, listen, listen. <laughs> Once upon a time, I lived a warrior's life. I strived, I sought, I conquered my fears. I saved the lives of others who were fearful by helping them to be brave. And all the way I enjoyed myself. So I am here to talk about it. Hear my stories and you will learn my warrior's ways. Listen to my life and you will find the way that is your own to travel. For I am kind and can see all ways. I have risen up to the sky and soar with the eagles to watch you. I have dug into the soil of my soul and grown. I have traveled by instinct to journey's end and floated in peace in the night. My eyes are above the world, but my stories are in it. Thus I can teach and my words will be beautiful. The lesson of the card. The lesson of the card. The exemplar has lived and thus passes on wisdom, not empty words. Come in the room. Back up your beliefs with experience. This is the only way to test for truth. The exemplar is the master storyteller, a sage, a wise one whose words empower. It is time to encourage the young, clarify possibilities for a balanced future, and disseminate pure thought. You have cast out doubt and despair. Now you can reveal hopes that can be made real by those who follow you. Speak of a world worth working for. Yeah. Mm. Yes. Yes. Your words pave the way to the future. Wait a minute. Circling back to our first card. Your words as the brave herald of new thought, pave the way for the future. This is our first card. Your words pave the way to the future. Your experience, whew, mm, yeah, I, I got chills everywhere. Your experience tells you which words hold fast through time. Your thoughts are pure for they are based on, for they are based on a reality they are based on a reality you understand fully by the life you have lived. They are not in conflict with what is, but encompass and describe it. Listen, the exemplar is the master storyteller, a sage, a wise one whose words empower. It is time to encourage the young, clarify the possibilities for a balanced future and disseminate pure thought. That is why this read right here. I came up on here and see it right out the gate. I ain't talking about conspiracy theories, um, horror stories, potential ways the world going to end with this glorious event unfolding on April 8th. This is a glorious event unfolding on April 8th which is why I'm trying to get my ass to Arkansas. You feel me? This is a glorious event unfolding in our lives on April 8th. Now, this whole read that I just read for you, what did I tell you? This whole read is a preparation. Every card in it has preparation advice. Every card in this read is preparation there is a preparation. Prepare the lodge so you can be steadfast in mind. Where's the steadfast mind? Prepare the lodge. Be deliberate so you can have a steadfast mind as you function as the, as the brave herald of new thought. You have to be steady in your own lodge, secure in your own lodge so that you can pave the way. You can be the brave herald of new thought, leading the young and empowering the young. What did it say? Embolden, encourage, empower the young, inspire them to move in courage. Hmm? That's what the herald of brave new thought does. With the inevitable, the inevitable healing spirit and power of the phoenix. Hmm? But you got to prepare the lodge. 
not just your physical abode, which is part of it, not just your physical abode, the, those, who you, those who surround you. Those who surround you are part of your lodge, baby. They support, they protect, they embolden, they secure, they encourage. As they encourage, see, they are not below her. They are sitting at her feet because they know what? She is the brave herald of new thought. She is in every card. There she is, the brave herald of new thought, pointing the way for the enthusiasm, energy, and, and courage for young people to execute the will. Oh, for the young to execute the will that she gives them the ability to hold in their mind's eye. She did that. She did that. She said, I'm not going to do it myself. I am going to use my life, huh? As the exemplar, the master storyteller, I am going to use the wisdom and the experiences of my life to form the words that give the young new ways of thinking because I'm the brave herald of new thought. It is my life as the exemplar. It is my life of one who has seen images in my mind and acted upon them. Hmm? I am the brave herald of new thought, teaching the young and giving them the courage as the master storyteller to execute the vision, to execute the vision, to execute the future. They have the energy. They have the stamina. They have the will. They have the courage. They have the fuck you attitude to the system. The fuck you attitude to the world that has been. The fuck you attitude to the system that oppresses. Mm. As the master storyteller, with a sturdy, secure lodge, they sit at my feet, not as servants. They sit at my feet to secure the future. You hear? And I call on my whole human family from every culture, from everywhere, and all day ancestors, and all my ancestors, and all the cosmic astrological alignment to serve me in this moment as I pave the way to an inevitable future that is crafted into a glorious goddamn conspiracy. Y'all in the room today? Y'all ain't in the room. <laughs> Y'all ain't in the room. Yes. This is what this car, this is what this did today. This read. You understand? Uh, Coco Shea, what's happening? I'm trying to get to Hot Springs, Arkansas because it's on the path of totality. And it's been six years since I went to Hot Springs, Arkansas to mine. I drove to the the highest peak in the mountains of Hot Springs, Arkansas, to mine for crystal quartz in, in Hot Springs, Arkansas. And I was like, what a radical way to bring this shit back into a cycle, back into a circle. It's six years later. And this is one of the many crystals I mined out of the mines, the crystal quartz mines in Hot, Rocks, in Hot Springs, Arkansas at the very top of a mountain where it is the first time that I heard God speak out loud. Like, yes, bitch, it's me. You the only one up here on this mountain. You up out here by yourself. You feel me? And I got something the fuck to say. And she went off for a long time. You feel me? So that's what my intention is to do is to, um, to go to hot Springs, Arkansas to um, dig for crystal quartz under the eclipse. Mm-hmm to dig for crystal quartz under the eclipse. I intend to be there in plenty enough time that I am able at the top of this mountain to experience the eclipse from on top of this mountain while my, my bare feet is in this blood red dirt mining for crystals under this most powerful event. Yes, I will be doing ceremony up there. Yes, I will. Yes, I will. Sure will. So that's what's going to be happening in, in Arkansas. Just so you know. Um, but yeah, that read was so affirmative in so many ways. Child, I was shook. That's why I started. 
with the read of the conspiracy that we crafted on 11 11 of 2023 on the anniversary of the founding of the temple of evolutionary emergence we can't keep talking about the world we want to see baby if we are not using all of our ashe on a regular basis to create it to generate it to speak it out of our mouths okay now i'm done with that i <laughs> see y'all y'all comments are crazy y'all are killing me you feel me yes yes Yes, Mia plays. Thank you so much. Thank you, Sister Cassandra, for putting the solar eclipse in the proper perspective. Yes. So some of the things, um, some of the things that have been that most of you, I'm sure, have been hearing if you're paying any attention about this solar eclipse is one, and I've said I said this at length when I was preparing you guys for the um the solar eclipse that took place on October 14th. Um Multiple traditions all over the world historically have treated the solar eclipse in particular with dread. Most cultures treat both eclipses, the blood moon or the lunar eclipse and the solar eclipse with dread. All of the traditions damn near everywhere on earth view these two phenomena as, with dread. They have all kinds of stories that all result in doom or gloom. But as I revealed to you, and I won't go back through the whole thing, you can go back and watch those videos that I did around October 14th in preparation for the solar eclipse. These traditions that we hear and that we know are still based in the in the early stages of patriarchal uh, of patriarchal uh, condemnation of the evidence of the mother. When I um Um, when I um, was doing the research, when I was on top of this motherfucking mountain in goddamn Hollywood, and this motherfucking this motherfucking scientist, this scientist, this astronomer who is the director of the goddamn um, observatory up here, the highest peak in the whole city of Los Angeles, at, at the observatory, which is said to have been a Masonic temple, you feel me? And he going to get up there on a microphone that you could hear all the way down to the bottom of the goddamn mountain talking about the dragon represents um, this dark entity that is consuming the sun. <coughs> so the ancient Chinese had a chant that essentially would say, dragon be gone, dragon be gone, dragon be gone, to chant away the dragon, to rescue the sun. I'm sitting on top of this mountain like, oh, I'm screaming. Oh, my God. I can't believe this is happening. What? I'm screaming, baby. That happened right here in Hollywood. While y'all was down on the streets chanting, you know, whatever regular ass chants y'all be chanting, these motherfuckers pulled a jack move on the solar eclipse at the top of this mountain mm -hmm. in front of this goddamn mausoleum. You understand? And so the, the, other, the other thing that, the, that these traditions teach is that the, um, the eclipses are to be feared. You hear it even now among, quote, new age thinkers. People who are supposed to be all spiritually cutting edge and shit. Say, what do they say? You can go down the list. If you Google rituals for the eclipse, rituals, blah, 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 blah. They'll say, oh, no, don't do magic work on the eclipses. Don't do magic work on the eclipses. It's too powerful. It's too radical. It's too scary. Don't do any rituals on the eclipse. Wait till the day before or the day after, but don't do that. Every in, They're talking about how many um, reservations along the uh, path of totality that are completely shutting down. No school, no, uh, no businesses open. This was a big theme because what do they call it? The the canyon of monuments i believe in um in utah which was where which is going to be in the path of totality the whole reservation like they have an open reservation but the whole reservation was like no nobody that, that is not a res resident nobody can come on the res during this eclipse that happened on october 14th that's the, that's 
But still, all of these stories, the reason I mentioned that all of these stories are based in a patriarchal condemnation of the mother, because the dragon represents the mother. The dragon in every culture and every tradition represents the mother, the Leviathan in the Bible, you name it, every serpent, every dragon, every snake, every winged, winged scaled creature represents the energy of the primordial mother. So this white boy get up on top of the goddamn mountain talking about the dragon is some dark entity trying to consume the sun, dragon be gone, and then elicit the energy of, I know, easily close to a thousand motherfuckers on top of that mountain. Brown, black, red, yellow, white, from all over the world, people in turbans and saris and all kind of shit, unknowingly and unwillingly pulled into a goddamn ritual led by a white scientist in the at the at the highest peak in the in the city that has the biggest portal, the in, biggest energy vortex in the country on the highest peak in front of a almost 200 year old observatory that used to be a goddamn Masonic temple with all kinds of creepy shit painted on the ceiling that don't nobody even pay attention to. You feel me? They just got pulled unwittingly, all they ashe, all they energy, corralled by this, this white scientist. And he they make they think it's a joke. Oh, so all these people all at the same time start chanting, dragon be gone, dragon be gone. And I was out there doing ceremony. So I'm out there, I got my feet in the dirt, I took my shoes off. I'm singing, I'm singing songs to the EME. I'm singing songs to the mothers. And then all of a sudden, I'm surrounded on all sides by all these people chanting down the mother, chanting down the mother, chanting down their salvation, praying for victory of the son over the mother. Oh, that happened. Praying for victory of the son over the mother. That happened. And the reason I'm telling you this is because these events, the blood moon, the lunar eclipse, and the solar eclipse, is the power of the mothers personified. That's why there are a million fucking horror stories about the blood moon, about the blood moon, about the blood moon. You understand? Ray Hagee wrote a book a few years back, sold a million copies about the the end of the world prophecies of the four blood moons. You understand? Everybody telling you witches. Y'all witches. Y'all power holders. Y'all priests and priestesses. Warlocks and wizards. And even y'all have bought into the bullshit about not corralling and exercising the power that is gifted to us during the eclipse. That's what you did. Now you can't do no ceremony. Can't do no. You can't do no rituals on no blood moon. You can't do no rituals on no lunar eclipse, on no solar eclipse. It's too much for you. It'll it'll overpower. It's too much power. Yeah, that's why we power deficient as it is. That's why we subdued as it is. So that is my long way of telling you to power the fuck up. Whatever your tradition, whatever your background, whatever your ancestral beliefs, whatever new ritual or ceremony you want to execute, whatever new culture or tradition you want to make real, do it now. Do it under that goddamn wonderful gift known as the solar eclipse on April 8th. The world that you want to see made real, execute and ensure its certainty with the energy of that April 8th solar eclipse. Whatever prayer you have ever prayed and have yet to see made real, baptize it under the energy of this solar eclipse on April 8th, baby. I Let me tell you, Kokoshe, I have been to that mine in, uh, in Arkansas and Baby, that you might as well be off grid. No reception, can't even send a text from up there. But what I um, so I know that I won't be able to do that while I'm up there. 
but I do intend to stay in the town below Hot Springs, uh, which is about 25 miles away from the site where I go mining, where I go rock rock hounding. I do intend to do lives around the event, like before and after the event, but during the peak of the uh, of the eclipse, I'm going to be in ceremony, baby. I'm going to be all the way the fuck in. I'm going to be right up on top of that mountain all the way the fuck in. So um, that's that's how that's going to happen. But I'm telling y'all, the conspiracy that I read to you earlier, every single one of us, male and female and all the genders in between, black, white, brown, yellow, red, everybody within the sound of my voice, everyone that's tuning in now, telling everybody else around you, even if you don't believe with no, believe nothing else I've ever said, even if you don't agree with nothing I've ever said, as a scientist, just be like, okay, scientifically, if this is the way that it's always been, don't nobody do shit, don't nobody go outside, everybody is told to stay in their house during the eclipse, don't look at it, it'll blind you, We babies walking around like this because they're scared to look up at the eclipse, you feel me? If this is what it's always been, as a scientist, let me just take the opposing position and see what happens. If you want to approach it like a scientist, cool. But what I'm telling you is April 8th represents a powerful, glorious, never to re be repeated opportunity to power the fuck up. To power the fuck up baby. So pull out all the stops. And I'm going to tell you, even if you ain't in the path of totality, those of you right here in Los Angeles, California, those of you in Oregon and Washington and all these other places, this solar eclipse, just like America's first Pluto returns that we are fully up the fuck in, everybody on earth is talking about this eclipse. Mm hmm. Everybody on Earth is watching America right now. Mm hmm. Everybody is watching this eclipse. I heard this dude say today. Let's see. That since America's founding, there have only been eight total eclipses in America, eight total eclipses, eight total solar eclipses. Two in the 1700s, three in the 1800s, two in the 1900s. You hear me? In the whole of the 1900s, two. In the whole of the 1800s, three. In the whole of the 1700s, two. Since this century started, there have already been two and then the one coming. Okay? So there have been eight total solar eclipses. Nah, I've been talking to y'all for four years about Pluto's, America's first Pluto returns and about Pluto representing the energy of the goddess Oya in Ifa tradition. Huh? She who is called the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and ending of all things. Hmm? The space in between all things. She is present at the moment you are conceived. She is present at the moment that you transition. Hmm? She who wears a mask to reveal her enemies, she, the bringer of the winds of radical transformation, she who brings the storm, baby. And she, as Pluto, Oya, she is also called what? The mother of nine, the owner of the number nine, hmm? the master of evolution. That's who she called. And when she makes this, this transition that we know is Pluto's first return, Guess who she's finally meeting after 277 years? Her husband, Shango, a.k.a. Aquarius. That's on November 19th, where she and Shango finally come together. Now, those of you who are in the Ifa tradition, what does that represent? Shango, the revolutionary. Shango, the fighter for justice. Huh? She, the equalizer. She, the harmonizer of the scales of justice. That's who she is. Hmm? Because Oya as Pluto, Oya as Hades, what do y'all think about Hades? Is when you die, you have to go be judged. Where do you go be judged? In the underworld. Is that not Oya? 
She is the harmonizer of the scales of justice. She is the one who issues judgment to wrongdoers. That's who she is. That's who she is. But we get lost on that because she is also the mother of nine, the revealer. She is called the great revealer, the mother of revelations. Hmm. Revelations talking about what? The whore of Babylon draped in gar uh, garbs of purple and scarlet upon a beast, a, a horned beast. And they always show what? A buffalo that she's riding on top of. Who, who is that if that is not? The great shape-shifting Oya, she who transforms into the buffalo. Y'all ain't hearing. Y'all ain't hearing. <laughs> right? And so Shango, Aquarius, and Pluto, Oya, are meeting on November 19th to change the world. That's what they came here to do. It's the only reason they came up on the scene right now during America's first Pluto returns. Hmm? Huh? And so this dude is talking about there have been eight, eight total eclipses in America. You feel me? Only one of them so far has been exclusive to the United States. That was on August 21st of 2017. Only one out of these eight eclipses. There have already been two since the turn of the century, since the 2000s. We early in the century, right? This one coming up on April 8th of 2024 will be the ninth. The ninth total solar eclipse visible in America it, since its founding, since its founding, it is the ninth, right? And it is the only one of all of them that has been completely exclusive to America. So one, uh, the one that was, uh, they said the first one, August 21st, 2017, it went all the way across the United States, but it was still visible in other countries. This one coming up on April 8th um, is exclusive to North America. Is exclusive. Won't be seen anywhere else other than North America, Mexico, United States, and uh, Canada. Exclusive to North America, won't be visible to anybody else. You feel me? It's the number ninth. Now, this was a Christian talking about this, by the way. This was a Christian. And... Um, <laughs> Let's see, sacral steam, lightning flashing. We're lightning flashing here while you say this, Cassandra. Woo, okay, yes. The Etowah Mound site in Cartersville, Georgia, will be open to the public to view the full solar eclipse. Thank you for that information, um, Patricia. But I'll be honest, I'd be leery about going into spaces that are like heavily populated with others. You understand? If you can get into a place of seclusion, especially if you melanated. If you melanated, you don't want to be surrounded by other people's energy, other people's energy um, under that moon, uh, under that eclipse, okay? But anyway, so this is a Christian given the 411 on how many total solar eclipses visible in the United States since the, since the U.S. is founding. While we here in this energy of the Pluto return, represented by the number nine, the ninth planet, Oya, the number nine, the planet, the ninth planet. And this is the ninth total solar eclipse in America's history happening during, listen, 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 listen. Okay. This guy said that the lunar eclipse at, in terms of, uh, in terms of Christian theology, the lunar eclipse is a, the energy of judging a nation. The solar eclipse is the energy of judging uh, America when, wh or wherever it is. You feel me? And so he said that th this is what the Christian said, that this eclipse is the number ninth eclipse in U.S. history. It, this is the Christian saying this, y'all. It's the number ninth solar eclipse in U.S. history, and the number nine represents completion, represents an end, represents judgment. That's what the Christians see. It. Represents judgment. And who, and who is this judgment directed towards? He said, God, using this, this eclipse as a symbol, has judged America. That's what the Christians say, y'all. 
So y'all can take it from me, like I've been telling y'all all these four years, or you can go to the whiteboard Christian who says, honey, he said, it's so clear. He said, because with the last solar eclipse that happened October 14th in 2023, he said, this these two eclipses literally forms an X, like X marks the spot. He said, with the number nine energy, that represents an end, a completion, and judgment. And then the cosmological X marks the spot between these two eclipses. God has passed judgment on America. That's what the white boy Christian said today. Yes, he did. I said, I accept that. <laughs> I accept that. That's what I've been telling y'all all along, though. Go back and watch my Pluto's Returns videos from a couple of years ago from the workshop I taught. This is exciting news. This is exciting news. Now, he was despairing. He's like, God done judged America. You feel me? It's over. It's the number nine. It's the number of completion. This shit about to go to shit. You feel me? Like, he was dismayed. He was dismayed and bewildered, child. You feel me? This should be glorious news for us. We must see this as a glorious completion. As the official end to that which we no longer want to see on earth, child. Yes, on April 8th. So witches, meditators, peace thinkers, way showers, wizards, warlocks, priests, bob laws, get your juju up. Power the fuck up to ensure the certainty of the future that we want to see made real, to make sure that we consecrate the prayers of our ancestors abused by this bitch in the light of this most radical energy that the mother is bringing to us, this lunar eclipse. Now, for those of you, so the lunar eclipse, I mean, the solar eclipse is a new moon. The solar eclipse occurs in a new moon. Lunar eclipse is a full moon. The solar eclipse is a new moon. So it still has that energy. New beginnings, planting new seeds, sowing new seeds of intention, prayers for the future, new ventures, right? New beginnings. That's what a uh, new moon represents, the dark moon. The dark moon also represents secrets and mysteries. But under a solar eclipse, those things are brought to light. Even though the world goes dark, the energy from the sun illuminates those things that have been mystery, secret, kept quiet, kept hidden. Mm-hmm. Right? And so let me tell you, in the... um. I go to my go to my Facebook page today because I posted a lot of of websites, articles, tidbits of information that I think are valuable in preparation for this for this um for the solar eclipse. It did not occur to me until today that April 8th is the day that the Academy Awards are held, right? Because I went and looked up, I Googled um April 8th in history, the significant events that occurred in April 8th in history. Well, April 8th is the uh, is the beginning of the Aries season, right? It's the season of war. It's the season of fire energy, right? And um, But it represents so much more. It represents drive. It represents courage, right? And baby, April 8th, it took me a while to scroll through the events that have occurred historically on April 8th. Big, massive, radical, permanently transformative events that have unfolded on April 8th. Historically, they went all the way back to about 2000 years on this site. So go on my Facebook page and check the links that I posted. Right. Um, but I want to tell you, you know, everybody's talking about predictions, end time predictions, end time predictions. I want to tell you, I've said this many, many times before, um, predictions in the world as we know it 
are not predictions. They are mathematical, predictable calculations. So what has happened is, is even as we as Christians growing up, my Facebook page is Cassandra Faye Floyd, Cassandra Faye Floyd. Even like when we was raised and brought up into Christianity and we was always taught that astrology is of the devil, that astrology is witchcraft. And so you was always told not to look up at the sky, right? Not to look up. What do they say? Not to look in the sky for signs and shit. Uh, and anybody who reads the stars, may she be condemned as a witch and all that bullshit. They did that for a reason. They don't want you to look up at the sky. Remember that movie that dude did about um, global warming or whatever? What was it called? Don't look up. Ooh. 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 Remember that movie that came out a few years ago about global warming and the name of the shit was Don't Look Up? And so there was a whole campaign. All the, all the, you know, all the far right was like, don't look up. Don't look up. Because there was a supposedly a um a meteor or some shit coming to the earth. And people was like, oh, the meteor is your imagination. They trying to la 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 la. These like really radical, like conspiracy theorists and shit. And so the campaign was don't look up, don't look up, don't look up. And even as these scientists was like, look, the world's coming to an end. You better get you better get shit to in order. This shit is inevitable. This this shit is it's the jig is up, right? That's what they did with astrology. Bible tell you, the Quran tell you, all the shit tell you, don't look up, don't look in the sky for signs. Do not look to see yourself in the heavens, in those things that surround you, in those things that can demystify the world for you. Don't look up. That's what they didn't spend 2000 years telling you. Don't look up. Don't look up. And even as they are telling you, don't look up, bitch, they know astrology. This white boy who is a Christian minister sat on his damn YouTube channel today and did a whole goddamn chronological assessment of the significances biblically of eclipses how they correspond to modern day time date all the information and his conclusion was this is the ninth eclipse according to the uh, according to uh the bible the number nine is the number of completion end and judgment and uh since this is america's ninth eclipse since its birth the jig is up america's over god has passed judgment on america so how he know all that if he's telling other Christians, don't look up, don't pay attention to astrology, don't be reading no charts, don't be figuring out how the planets and shit are aligning in movement, how, how he was able to do this dissertation without knowing astrology? How was he able to do this presentation without a deep dive, both feet first, into astrology and its sister science, astronomy? How was he able to do that? So while they tell you don't look up, they've been studying for. 2,000 years plus astronomy, astronomy and astrology and orchestrating and writing books to show you the superiority of their, their prophets to be able to predict the future. No, they don't predict the future. They know astrology when your ass don't. You can calculate astrological movements for the next 25,000 years. That they tell you don't look up. So everything that happens, you think is a surprise. Everybody all clutching their pearls right now about the coming eclipse in fear and terror. <gasps> like they didn't know a hundred years ago, this eclipse was going to happen. And it was going to happen in a period of time that at least astrologically tells them that there's going to be war and turmoil and all of this shit that they can plan for. Who was it? Kissinger? I think it was Kissinger that said, make no mistake. Was it Kissinger? It might have been. I think it was Kissinger. Make no mistake. There is nothing that happens in the United States. Nothing. No detail too small. There's nothing that happens in the United States that is not at least 25 years planned in advance. How they can plan in advance? Because Reagan got a chief astrologer. Because every president in the history of this country has a chief astrologer. Well, they tell you don't look at the signs. They looking at the signs, writing them down plotting and organizing and strategizing around those signs, planetary movements in their relationships, and then telling you it's a prediction of some wise prophet man somewhere. Predictions 
are mathematical calculations based on understanding the mathematics hmm? of astronomy and her sister science, astrology. That's all. There are no predictions. There are, there are, um, what do you call it? There are plans, plots, and strategies orchestrated around mathematical comp uh, mathematical um, calculations of these heavenly movements. So if a war unfolded, it did not unfold out of the blue. Sorry. If there is, there is no spontaneity in the art of war, it, Kissinger said it himself 50, 40 years ago, bitch, everything we do, we have planned at least 25 years in advance. Believe it. So what may new, look new to you has been well thought out, calculated, and put into process mathematically every time, every time, every time, every time. So if you get your little your little tail feathers ruffled, and that, what does that do? It gives the illusion of superiority. It gives the predictions, give the illusion of superiority. These men in power... Ain't, it ain't predictions, boo. It's mathematical calculations. It is plots, plans, and strategies based on mathematical calculations. Every, the book, the Bible, is a compilation of strategies based on mathematical and astrological, astrological calculations. Prove me wrong. Prove me wrong. You feel me? And so while we out here clutching pearls and shit, you feel this. So um, what's the name? Topanga mentioned earlier. The damn, uh, the damn red heifer conspiracy. It's not a conspiracy. This is the this war unfolding when it did, how it did, seven days before the eclipse in October. Two days before that, they doing some random out, random out the blue testing of the uh, national broadcast system and the only places that were going to be tested was the United, the continental U.S. and Israel. The only, y'all remember that? October 5th? Beware the testing of the, inter, of the national broadcast system and the only places that were going to be tested was the United States and Israel. That happened. Two days later, Hamas, out of nowhere, after the testing of the national broadcast system, Hamas uh, does whatever they say Hamas did, which is suspect, by the way, seven days before this eclipse that everybody on earth was talking about. Seven days before that. Mm -hmm. That shit was not spontaneous. Because goddamn, what's his name? Steven Spielberg, two months after the shit was releasing Girl, what's the girl name? The, the Israeli girl that plays Wonder Woman. The Israeli actress that plays Wonder Woman. Child, she had a, a film showing at her house two months after October 7th of some movie about the horrors of October 7th. Like, bitch, how you get a film in two months that you're doing a private screening for? Spielberg talking about, we got, a, we got a movie in the works about the atrocities of October 7th. How? You ain't even had time to write no script in two months, bitch. When I say mathematical calculation, plot, plan, and strategy. But child, we forever thinking everything is just spontaneous occurrences. Nothing in this bitch is spontaneous. Nothing. Nothing in this motherfucker is spontaneous. That's why I say we, those of us who now know, those of us who now see, those of us who now hear, so many of you have reached out to me. So many of you have reached out to me. Uh, Mia plays, Mia plays. Baby, let me tell you. You said Nancy Reagan was into astrology starting. Let me tell you something. Uh, you said strong. Nancy Reagan was into astrology. Let me tell you. Go back and watch the movie Beautiful Creatures. Has anybody seen the movie Beautiful Creatures? It's one of my favorites. It's cute. And some people was like, oh, it's so corny. Um, what's the name? Um, Viola Davis is in it as a juju woman. Um, beautiful Creatures. It's a vampire story. But baby, the subtext in that movie is every fucking thing. It's everything. 
And the reason I mentioned that is because when Viola Davis is talking to the young girl, witch who is about to um, is about to receive the claiming, she's about to go through this ritual called the claiming. Uh, she's Viola Davis is taking her down into this basement of this secret library for riches that's under the town's library. And they're like, you know, how big is this thing? It's, it seems like it goes under the whole city. She said it goes all, it goes, it spans underneath the entire Eastern seaboard. And um, she said, uh, she said the only, she said the only, the only person that which is the only human, the only mortal that humans ever feared was Nancy Reagan. That shit always stood out to me. I was like, what is the significance of that? Why they call out Nancy Reagan like that? In this movie, Viola Davis is the only mortal that witches ever feared was Nancy Reagan. Go back and watch the movie. The movie is dope. But anyway, everything is of mathematical calculation, baby. Everything. And so we're going to be gripped in fear like somebody was mentioning to me the other day about FEMA making this announcement about, you know, making sure you have enough food and water in your house for a certain period of time. And all of this stuff, um, people are real. Every town along the um, the path of totality is preparing. They're saying the path of totality. They're expecting about seventy million tourists to descend along the path of totality. Seventy million, right? And so they're they're you know preparing for what that is going to mean in terms of traffic and all of this stuff. Um, yeah, but I would say. Just like our reading said, our reading said, be the brave new, brave herald of new thought. Speak only words that that show the way forward. What does it say? Um, I, I see love and I speak to love. I see beauty and I speak to beauty. She says anything. She said the truth is the underlying good in everything. And anything less than wondrous is a lie. Anything less than wondrous is a lie. I see love and I speak to love. I see beauty and I speak to beauty. Where I do not see these things, I bring them. I create them. What she say? She reiterated that. The storyteller has to be able to take her integrated experiences in life and her knowledge and her wisdom to be able to shape the new thought, to be able to shape the new world. Where? In the hearts and minds of the young. In the hearts and the minds of the young. In her lap is the tapestry of her life. In, the lap is, in her lap is the tapestry of her life that she shares with the young. Hmm? She fortifies herself in the teaching lodge of arrows, surrounding herself. <laughs> surrounding herself with her spiritual family. Hmm? Listen, she protects herself from envy, resentment, and saboteurs by calling out, calling on everybody, calling on the ancestors, calling on the ancient ancestors, calling on the great spirit, calling on the cosmos crowned on her head, calling on the entire human family, the young and old, and all those in between. Hmm? To pour into her, because in pouring into her, in surrounding her, in covering her, in supporting her, they are certain that the future that emanates from her will benefit them all. This is why we support. This is why we cover. This is why we surround. So. I'm saying this, the arrows, again, what did I say? The arrows are a representation of the power of the tongue, the power of our words, the power of our words to harm or to heal, the power of our words to create the new or to set us back into the old, tie us, bound us, yoke us to the old. The power of our words have the ability to ricochet quicker than anything else throughout the entire cosmic fabric. How are we using our words in preparation for this most magnanimous event? How are we speaking in the days leading up to this radical event? 
Are we speaking in every moment a glorious conspiracy of the world made new? Or are we speaking in lament and fear and woe of what has been? Are we recreating in the moment the ails of the past? Are we recreating in the moment all the laborious, woesome, dreadful shit that we are subdued by? Or are we speaking into existence a radical, unimagined, beautiful, certain future? Are we speaking this together? What does the word conspiracy mean? It means breathing aloud an oath that is, let's see, breathing aloud an oath together, breathing together an oath to ensure a certain future, breathing together an oath that ensures a certain definitive future. That's what conspiracy means. Look up the etymology. So whenever you re-speak in somebody else's conspiracy, you are ensuring a certain result. When you are speaking, repeating, investing in somebody else's conspiracy, you are ensuring a certain definitive result. Can we create a new conspiracy? Can we contribute to a global breathing together, a sacred oath that that ensures a certain definitive result, which is what? The world made new, the world healed, the world liberated, the world made free. Individual, every individual on earth being ensured sovereignty. The sovereignty that the birth from the mother from the body of their mother was supposed to ensure them a baptism in her sacred water. An oath a covenant made when her sacred blood crowned the top of your head. When you went from possibility as unseen into a definitive destiny to be executed at your birth, consecrated in your mother's blood, it was supposed to ensure you sovereignty, that sovereignty that has been stolen from you, that sovereignty that has been taken from you. Now, when we breathe the future, when we breathe together a sacred oath that is guaranteed to ensure a certain result. That's the only business. That's the only thing we got any business talking about for the rest of this year, for the rest of our life. Aya is on the scene to ensure that what we have been praying for can be made real. Shango, her partner in crime, if you will, the turn up man is going to meet his wife on the scene November 19th, where they will dance for 20 years, baby. They'll dance for 20 years. Because when they when they link up for good on November 19th, they're going to be up in this bitch, posted the fuck up for 20 years. This is the tone setting energy that we must be engaged in. April 8th, just like I went up on that goddamn mountain on October 14th, this is the term setting energy for what we want to create. This is the new baptism, if you will, in the waters of Aquarius, the water bearer, Shango. This is the new baptism. You understand what I'm saying? And Shango is beautiful. Shango is the turn up man, Lord of the drum, God of dance. He's not just a war God. He goes to war when oppression is dominating. He's the liberator. He is Shango. But guess what? He got flair while he doing it. You feel me? Oh, yeah. The goddess of the winds of radical transformation. She who is the governess of revelations. She who wears the mask to reveal her enemies. Hmm? She who is the mother of nine, the alpha and the omega, the beginning and the ending, present in every space in between, present in the space between your inhale and exhale. Yes, she is. Yes, she is. Present in the moment that you climax. Yes, she is. Yes, she is. Hmm? 
she goes into war in a skirt of nine of nine colors. She goes into war dancing, baby. And every time her skirt flings around, a storm of transformation flings off the end of it. A tornado, a fucking typhoon, a goddamn hurricane. You can take the energy any way you want. Oya is the mother of abundance. Hmm? She governs the marketplace. She's like, bitch, I want you to be rich. I want you to be rich. If you are just, I want you to be rich. If you direct from the heart as the brave new herald of the brave herald of new thought, as the brave herald of new thought, I want you to be abundant. That's what she says. They, they get busy. And what they don't need is your uncertainty. What they don't need is to hear your fears. What they don't need is to hear that you are a coward. What they don't need is to hear you complain and bitch and moan and woe and shit. That's what they don't need. They need like we up in this bitch. Now we see. We up in this bitch. Now we know. We up in this bitch. We can shape the future as we see fit because our mother or Yah is on deck to ensure it so. Because Shango is in the space to make sure that it is certain that our desires for our realm are made real. Everybody on deck to make it so. The courage, the audacity of Aries is on deck. Mm hmm. That's the requirement. What does it mean to speak a glorious con conspiracy? That in this period that we in, where that that new moon in Pisces, that uh that blood moon that just handed all us our asses, that spring equinox that was so goddamn radical. Oh my god, so radical! It was purposeful that we were out in the desert. And everybody thought I was crazy. What you mean you burying bitches in the desert? I mean, just what I said. I'm burying motherfuckers in the desert. Spirit says, go to the desert and bury human beings in the ground in a death, inception, and rebirth ceremony. Exercise the demons of their past in my body. Plant them anew. Walk them through their their gestational period and help them be reborn in the body of the mother exercise them from their fucking baptism in the blood of Jesus Christ exercise them from colonial past exercise them from that which holds them down and raise them up anew baptized in the body of our mother yes that's what the fuck we did under that damn spring equinox in the middle of the desert that's what the fuck we did and baby when I came up out of there, she was like, yes, bitch, more of this, more of, more of this, create the new, create the new. What are the new traditions that we are going, when we become ancestors, when people look back on our period in human history as ancient ancestors, a thousand years from now, 2000 years from now, 5,000 years from now, and they look back at the 2000s, at the culture that we left. Are they just going to look at a bunch of motherfuckers who perpetually, re perpetually, perpetually just executed cultures of old? Like every culture that we are not engaged in had, an, had a beginning, baby. Every culture that we execute dogmatically as tradition and culture and we don't color outside the lines, they too were once new. They too emerged from a set of social, cultural, and environmental circumstances that fit the needs of the people when they were new. What are going to be the cultural, what are going to be the cultural identifiers of us right now in this period? Are they going to look back and say, damn, they couldn't come up with nothing new? Like they still in 2000 was hog tied dogmatically to the execution of rituals that was 5,000 years older than they are. They couldn't come up with nothing new. Nothing that was peculiar to them in their time and what was happening in the world when they were there. Is that what they're going to say about us? What are they going to say about the 2020s? Are they going to be able to say anything dynamic, new and awesome, radical and, and inspiring? Like we are able to look back 100 years ago at the 1920s, at the roaring 20s, 
at all of the highs and lows that came as a consequence of the 1920s? Are they going to be able, what is the culture of the 2020s? What is the new renaissance of the 2020s? What is the new radical, globally transformative thing that we are creating in the 2020s that 100 years from now, our uh, descendants will be able to say, God damn, the 2020s was turned the fuck up. Like they was, they was changing the game. The Harlem Renaissance was in the 20s. What's the new renaissance of, of uh, in the 1920s? What's the new, what's the new renaissance of the 2020s? This most nag magnanimous period in human history for us. Where we, right here in the United States of America, can shape the whole goddamn planet. Reshape the planet. What are we creating? What is the art that is the peculiar expression of the energy represented that has been handed to us on a galactic silver platter? Or are you so bogged down in the noise created to distract you that you cannot create anything new? You cannot think outside the box. You cannot, you dare not color outside the lines. Is this going to be the decade that they say, oh my God, the whole, the whole democratic process was transformed by these radicals who were able to see clearly into the future because that's what's required. That's what's required. Anybody talking about going to the polls this year, you have lost your fucking mind. You have lost your mind to see this wicked ass institution as your only hope when it has not guaranteed you a motherfucking thing. Every, right here in broad daylight, every right that you fought, bled, and died for being uphanded and unended in broad daylight. Everything, every every ounce of progress you think that you have made is being dismantled in real time and you still talking about running out to the polls. This energy of these movements requires a total, total breakdown of all that is old and decadent, old and repugnant and oppressive and doesn't even have to hide its oppressive behavior anymore. You still talk about voting for Biden. And he is a genocidal war criminal in real time, in real time. But all he has to do is feign senile every once in a while to get y'all to, to strike at some empathy. Oh, well, he's just making ignorant decisions because he's senile. No, the fuck he is not. It's a play. It's a play. The whole thing is an orchestration, baby. And so these are the conversations. Now they fucking with my internet, by fucking with my connection. These are radical times that are to be welcomed, that are to be welcomed joyfully and enthusiastically and courageously and with absolute unwavering, unflinching certainty. The future is ours to create. The future is ours to create. Mm -hmm. It is ours to create. The great benefics have said your wildest dream, the wildest, biggest, most radical dream you've ever had. Dream it now and speak it out loud. Dream it now and speak it out loud. The young man that came earlier to get a reading, I think this is the last thing I'm going to say. No, it's not the last thing I'll say. But the young man that came to get a reading today is a um, very young, um, just graduated a few years ago, very young film director really good, really talented. And before we even got started reading the cards, I asked him, um, cause I was working on something else. I asked him, I said, when you think about the future, when you think about the future that you want to live in, when you think about the, ch the future that you want your children to live in, and it's the best, most, it's the best possible scenario. What do you see? Right off the top of your head, without even like debating too long, what is it that you see? Best possible scenario, what is it that you see? How much of what you see is tied to your your own 
conditioning, your own ideas based on where you are in the present or based on your understanding of the past? How much of it can you can you see that is something totally new and totally different? Now write that. Now create that in a film. Now make a commercial of that. That's the role of the artist. That's the role of the brave herald of new thought. That's the role of the master storyteller. That's the role of the musician. That's the role of the poet. That's the role of the dancer. That's the role of the horn player. That's the role of anybody who has any artistic ability whatsoever in this moment is to always be shaping in the consciousness of the entire world, this new way of thinking, this world that we can create, this, this future where all are well and all are whole in the mother. Mm -hmm. What does that look like in terms of housing? What does that look like in terms of communication? What does that look like in terms of how we do business? What does that look like in terms of the environment? What does that look like in terms of the energy that animals put out? Are they putting out energy of avoidance and fear because humans are fucked up? I'm telling you. What does that look like in terms of waste? Not only the production of waste, but resolving the waste that we've already produced and putting it to good use, right? What does that look like in terms of disease and making it obsolete? Hmm? What does this new world look like in every single aspect of life? How does it translate to be at one with the mother? How does it translate to live fully in the body of the mother? What does it look like to create the new Eden where she reigns supreme? What does it mean when she reigns supreme? What does the Garden of Eden look like? Where the Garden of Knowledge and the gar I mean, the Tree of Knowledge and the Tree of Life, the, the Tree of Life and the Tree of Knowledge live together harmoniously in the garden and the serpent. Mm hmm lived peacefully within the garden. Do you understand? Lived peacefully, lived exalted in the garden. Yes, she did. Yes, she did. And what did they say? That the inhabitants of the garden were fully abundant, were not aware of their nakedness. All they did was eat and love and play. That's all they did. That's all, what does it mean to create a new Eden where the mother reigns supreme, baby? Where the, where the great primordial she reemerges and all is made well on earth again. I said again. Now, what? how does that translate in our daily life in this future? Be able to see it. Be able to produce it in music. Be able to will it into existence with every word that you say. That's the work. Because again, like I said two and a half hours ago, it ain't going to be no talented tense. There ain't going to be no motherfucking Messiah. There ain't going to be no guru, no shaman, no individual, some great motherfucker who is going to rescue the rest of us. That's not going to happen. What is going to save the planet is for every person on here that can hear, and I'm saying on here, I mean on the planet, I mean on the earth, to tap into, especially those of us who are in the know right now, we have a responsibility to tap into the heavenly waters of Aquarius. This represents total illumination when the waters of heaven pour upon the earth and people's consciousness is instantly raised. What does that sound like? It sounds like quantum physics. What does Bruce Lipton say about the impact of quantum physics? That if you can get 10% of the population, of the global population, to accept a new idea, all you need is 10% to accept embodied, that means actionably in behavior, 10% of the population to believe and accept a new idea. This is where the cosmic, the, the, the quantum transference of information takes on a, uh, this is when the transfer of information takes on a quantum, a quantum leap. 10% of the population accept a new idea. It becomes quantum, meaning it pours out like the waters of heaven poured by Aquarius that instantly guarantees a shift in the consciousness of the whole. 
Mm -hmm. This is the period. God damn it. We fully in it. We fully in it. And it's exciting. It's exciting. And we should be throwing parties about the coming of November 19th. Our, what I am, what I believe is our official entry into the Aquarian age. That's my personal opinion. You understand? So November 19th is our official entry into the Aquarian age. And we have to make sure that the energy, the power, the potential represented by that, that we swing the pendulum in our favor and not the opposition's. Because the energy is up for grabs. That's what y'all don't get. The energy is up for grabs. And so what has been our detriment is because we don't know, we haven't historically known astrology and, and all of these things, numerology and all these things. And now we're all getting hip to our enemy has been able to take the potential, the momentum and the potential of these heavenly, uh, these heavenly occurrences to shift in their favor in opposition to us, to maintain a stranglehold on us, to get garner power against us to further exploit us. But now that we know, and enough of us know that if we collectivize the work, because what does a conspiracy require? The breathing together, a sacred oath that ensures a certain result. And the example that's used when you Google the etymology is like an orchestra. An orchestra, there might be 40 different roles 40 different pieces of sheet music. Hmm. 15, 20 different instruments. But in the coming together, they are ensuring a singular result, a singular outcome, a singular piece of music is produced. Even though they all got these different roles, they all got this different music and they all got these different instruments. That's what it means to create an orchestra is a conspiracy group. The coming together, the breathing together, something sacred that is certain to produce, that it ensures uh, a certain result. It is guaranteed to produce a certain result. You understand? So when I tell you to vision the most radical future that always centers the good of the whole, that always centers the good of the whole. When I tell you to begin to think of images, what does the water feel like? What does the water sound like in this new world? Because we can hear the water if we're quiet in the world that we exist in right now. What does the water sound like in this world that we create? What does the water sound like? What do the trees sound like in this world that we create? Hmm. Will we finally be able to genuinely communicate telepathically because all the noise has been removed and allows God to speak through us? How does that translate in our relationship to the other creatures on this planet? Oh, my God. I got to tell you, all I got to try to wrap this up. But I got something to tell you. all Some things that I did want to share with you that you may be hearing about um, in the coming days. One. Um, Topanga mentioned very early on about the red heifer uh, conspiracy. It's not a conspiracy. Um, and we need to keep our eyes on this. So I went into a deep dive. Y'all know I'm always talking about bull symbology um, mythologically, right? That its origins is old. I talked to you guys about it last year when I read, I mean, last week when I read a little bit to you from the great cosmic mother about um, Inki uh, and the Epic of Gilgamesh and the relationship that um, that his murder of the bull of heaven uh, represented. This, sim this symbology is replete throughout history and it always goes back to this original story, this Babylonian story about Enki ra rising up against his mother, Inanna, the queen of heaven, and slaughtering the sacred bull. Here, these Hebrews are trying to re- um, to re um, reenact the story in the sacrifice of the red heifer uh, that is supposed to guarantee the building of the third temple in Jerusalem. Listen, this is not a conspiracy. This is something that we need to be paying attention to because they are planning the slaughter of this sacred red bull, this red heifer, 
um, it, on during the Passover, uh, which is April April twenty second. The Passover this year is April twenty second through April thirtieth. We need to listen. What are we doing to so because they doing ritual? Why you out here talking about stay away from the, the eclipse and avoid the eclipse? These motherfuckers are pulling out the stops. They just transferred five red heifers from Texas to Israel to sacrifice um, in uh, in Israel to, quote, ensure the building of the third temple. This is what this genocide is about, by the way. This is what this genocide is about. It's one of the things that these, this genocide is about, because I know there's other very politically significant um, economic reasons, but this thing here, they've been talking about rebuilding the third temple for all these generations. And they talking about sacrificing these cows, um, um, in Israel to ensure the erection of the third temple. This is something that we need to be talking about. We need to be plotting against. We need to be powering up on, because again, this is this quote Hebrew story about the building of the third temple, but it goes back way, way, way before them. It goes back way before them. These stories are all astrological stories. Inky rising up against the queen of heaven and slaughtering the sacred bull of heaven is about the final victory of patriarchy over the matriarchy. That's what it's about. That's what it's about. These motherfuckers are attempting to pull an energetic jack move. They're fighting for the life and the maintenance of patriarchy with this ritual is what they're doing. And they need enough blood to offer in ritualistic sacrifice. That's what the genocide is about. Okay. So keep your eye on that. They've already been broadcasting. They've already been talking about it on the news about they've already built this massive altar. They've already been working with the, um, the the uh, the Levitical priests who are going to be doing the ceremony. This needs to be included. You know what I'm saying? Um, in our conspiracy. Um, so that was one thing. The other thing that I found interesting about this, uh, and this is something I'm going to be talking to you guys about over the days. This isn't the last one I'm going to do. But something interesting, and this is how I'm going to end. So something interesting that a lot of people are talking about, about the April 8th eclipse, is the cicada brood. Has it by, by show of hand, has anybody been hearing anything about the cicada brood? Anybody? One person? Nobody? Anybody? I'm surprised if y'all into conspiracy theories, ain't nobody heard about the cicada broods. So corresponding with this, um, with this eclipse. Okay, Tajali, thank you so much. I thought I was on here by myself. Uh, um, in conjunction with this eclipse is this magnanimous event called the cicada brood. It is a double cicada brood. It is the first time since 1803 that there was a cicada brood of this magnitude. They estimate that there are going to be trillions of cicadas and the cicada, the cicada brood is going, is basically along the path of totality of this next eclipse, right? It's in that whole area. And um, the next time a cicada brood of this magnitude will happen is in the year 2245. 2245 is the next time a cicada brood of this magnitude will happen. And so everybody's talking about cicada apocalypse and, and the cicadas and, and how this is a sign. This is like the plague of the Bible and the locust and shit because everything is all doom and gloom, right? So I wanted to talk to you about the cicadas. It's a personal soapbox of mine. One, one is because I've been talking about cicadas for about the last four years. The reason why is because a dear friend of mine, Kevin Sandbloom, you should check out his music, kevinsandbloom.com. Uh, Kevin Sandbloom is an extraordinary musician. And during the pandemic, he released an album called Cicada. The album is about uh, global warming. The whole album is about global warming. But 
it is interesting because you would never know it. The songs are so beautiful, so unbelievable. It's my I'm it's close, it's easily my one of my favorite albums that he's done. And I have every album that he's done. But Cicada, and I I kept being on him. I'm like, yo, the Cicada broods are coming up. You got to release Cicada. You released it during pandemic. So people who needed to hear it probably didn't hear it. You need to do a whole re-release of Cicada. It is an extraordinary album. I love it, right? And so I've been on his ass about <laughs> doing like a, a like a you know a double uh, you know a re-release of Cicada during this month during um during um April right like maybe around um Earth Day or whatever so that's one reason I've been talking about cicadas a lot cicadas once I started talking about them four years ago they started coming up everywhere like every time I was turning I was in Mississippi. A woman had hired me to do a personalized retreat for her and her family. So I went to their house and I did not a, a nine day personal, I facilitated a nine day personal retreat for her and her family. And while I was out there, I mean, the middle of nowhere, Mississippi, okay, like middle of nowhere, Mississippi, we're driving into town and there's a giant, this is two years ago, there's a giant billboard in the middle of literal nowhere, nowhere for miles that says, here comes the cicadas. I took a picture of it and I sent it to Kevin. I was like, Kevin, this is in the middle of Mississippi, nowhere. Here come the cicadas. I immediately called him. I was like, you got to re-release cicada. <laughs> you got to re-release cicada, right? I just been seeing it everywhere. So when I started hearing about the super brood um, happening this year, um, uh, Mia plays, they actually have five heifers now. One was just born last month, a perfectly red a uh, heifer was just born in Israel last month. So they have five heifer, heifers now. So anyway, the cicada broods. So I started hearing about the cicada broods. I was like, here we go again. So I was immediately called him. I was like, you got to re-release cicada. You got to do it next month. I'm telling you, it's going to be the turn up for you. It's going to be the, the turning point for you, right? So then I started hearing about these broods and I started remembering some of the things that stood out as significant about the symbolism of the cicada. Now, I practice traditional Chinese medicine, okay? Cicada bugs are considered a Chinese herb in traditional Chinese medicine. So I pulled out my Materia Medica today. This is the complete Materia Medica of all traditional Chinese herbs, okay? It's 365 herbs in here. And what page was that on? Page 52, I think. Um, the cicada is one of the first herbs mentioned in the book. It is huge in Chinese medicine, right? So the cicada, I ain't going to give y'all all, all the 411, but the cicada bug in Chinese medicine is used to what we call um, extinguish wind. The cicada bug is, in Chinese medicine, it's actually the molting of the cicada bug that's used as medicine. So when, because so you know, when they come up out of the earth, they mate, they molt, and then they die, right? And so, um, <laughs> um, I would say, Mia plays, listen to what I'm going to tell you about the cicadas and how magnanimous they are, and maybe you can experience them differently than you did in 2010, right? They are magical creatures. Okay, but as an herb, as medicine. So those of you who live out in the Eastern Hemisphere or in the Eastern portion of the United States, um, don't get rid of the, when you see, because they'll leave. That's one of the things people complain about is after their little, their little resurrection is, um, after their little resurrection is over, people are disgusted by the trillions of little carcasses, their molts that are left all over the place gather the molts. They're big medicine. They're big, big, big medicine. Huge. One of the most important medicines in the Materia Medica. There are 365 herbs in here, okay? So cicada bug moltings are primarily used for the lung and the liver. The lung and the liver. Any conditions that deal with the lungs and the liver. That is broad because the lungs um, open onto the skin. So they treat rashes, 
they treat um, any kind of condition that has that is accompanied by itching. They are great for um, venting, uh, like the chicken pox and measles. Um, they are, let's see. So they're especially good for conditions that produce heat because they are a cool herb, they are ascending, and they disperse and extinguish both external and internal wind. Um, so any condition that is defined by itching, automatically cicada bug, right? Um, yes, they're great for the eyes. Oh, you're talking about the cicada bugs have red eyes. <laughs> You are really tripping right now. I can feel your emotion through the freaking through the freaking zoom, girl. So anyway, um, let's see. You can use them with other herbs. They're great for early um, for early stage of measles. They're great for sore throats. They're great for um, what we call um, 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 wind heat invasion, which is what we would call a hot cold. Wind heat invasion is a hot cold. A hot cold is like a rapid pulse. Your face gets red. Your eyes get red. Your throat is sore. You got a sore throat. It only happens with a hot cold or wind heat invasion. So they're great for wind heat invasion. Mm, they're great for any kind of damp heat condition, any kind of oozing. So if you got rashes that ooze, like rashes that are weepy, like have pus, great for those. Right. So on and so forth. Then I think that was the most important thing about the cicada preparation, how to prepare the cicada bug carcasses, not the carcasses, the malt. It's not the dead bug. It's the it's their first malt. That is the medicine. Uh, so there's a there is a whole description here on how to prepare it. Right. Um, how to drink it because you would make it as a tea. But yeah, I remember the first time I had to drink some take the cicada bug tea and I'm looking at these, I had to prepare the tea and I'm looking at these little, these little cicada moltings in, in the pot and I was freaking out. But anyway, so that's the first thing is cicada bugs are extremely important medicine, which, you know, the fact that you only see them once every 13 to 17 years, it's a great opportunity to collect the moltings for medicine, this big medicine, huge it is one of the cornerstones of traditional Chinese medicine, cicada, cicada bug moltings. So I thought I would start there because it's exciting to me. Uh, and if anybody is out in that coast where um, the cicada bugs be at, um, I would say collect a whole bunch of mason jars of the molts and ship them to me. I will buy them from you. Is that serious? Okay. The other thing is, is the song of the cicada bug. I have this idea that one of you who lives out there will have to help me execute. I would like to get a recording, a live, like in your backyard, recording of the sounds of the, of the cicada, especially this brood, the year 2024 super brood corresponding with this awesome eclipse energy on April 8th. I want that recording. So anybody in the vicinity of the cicada bug, if you have a laptop with a microphone, if you have a good iPhone recording capacity, I need you to collect cicada bug sounds. I'm plotting. I'm plotting. I have an idea. And I need that recording. Okay? So that's homework I've just given you. Now, what are we doing? I'm not talking in ambiguities here. What did I call? This live right here in the top corner, creating a glorious conspiracy. I need cicada bug recordings. That's the homework for anybody listening. You don't need to know the why. You need to know that it is creating, it is part of the glory, creating the glorious conspiracy. That's what you need to know. I need cicada bug recordings. As a matter of fact, I need you to collect Cicada bug, cicada bug moltings, not the dead bugs, the moltings when they shed, when they do their first shed. That's one thing. So anyway, did you know that the cicada bug 
is one of the oldest living organisms on earth. It's one of the oldest living creatures on earth. Mia plays. That's a story for another day. I, you can e email me and I will tell you. Um, but yes, cicadas are one of the oldest living creatures on earth. Mm-hmm. And so we're going to talk about the spiritual significance of the cicada. Now, this was me collecting um, information from various cultures because all cultures have something to say about the significance of the cicada. So some of the some of the references I used was um, uh, Kemetic Egyptian, um, native Western Hemispheric, uh, North American Native. Um, North American native um, meanings, ideas, and significance, um, and some European. I just collected from everything that sounded awesome. Okay. So here are some of the spiritual significances of the cicada. This is me teaching you to see the world differently, to approach the world differently so that you can speak differently. Like I said at the beginning, everybody's talking about the doom and gloom, the woe, and this is the end of the world and the end of days and sign of the times and the rapture and all of it, all things bad. FEMA is saying, oh, my God, be prepared. Make sure you got enough water. Make sure you got enough food. Everybody's saying, oh, my God, conspiracy, conspiracy, conspiracy. Wars and rumors of wars. I'm telling you, just like our reading said, to be deliberate in the creation of a teaching lodge of the arrows, no bad news, no magazines, nothing that does not contribute to what this vision of the future that you are creating in real time. You have to have a sturdy foundation in the lodge, in the teaching lodge of the arrows. Speak only words that contribute to the future. Speak only words that embolden and encourage others. This is the time for us to practice what we preach and practice what we preach. Being able to say that our actions aligned with what we say out of our mouth and wait to see the fruits of it. Action partnered with ideas. Testing ideas through radical action. When we was out there in that motherfucking desert burying women in the dirt and helping them as spiritual midwives to be reborn from the body of the mother. And she said, clearly, yes, bitch, more of this radical action. Put your theories to work in the real world. Test them and see what it produces. More of this. That's what I, listen, I just did a, a live few days ago to say what? Fortune favors the bold. Who is bold? Who is more bold than Oya? and Shango. Who is more radical than Oya and Shango, who are doing a dance with us in real time right now? Because Pluto is in Aquarius right now. She's going to shift back for a half a second into Capricorn, but that's only for a second in September. But right now, they still, they they doing a dance right now. Pluto is in Aquarius right now. And will be permanently partnered with Aquarius on November 19th. They are the divine, they are the, the definers of bold and radical action necessary to create the future, necessary to generate the new. The cicada is right on board. She like, bitch, I've been up in here longer than all y'all, longer than humans. <laughs> you understand? I've been around since the dinosaur. The cicada, the oldest, one of the oldest living creatures on earth. What does she symbolize? What the, what should her song inspire in you, Mia Plays, who was terrorized by them in 2010? Now you know. You didn't know then. So all you could do was be like disgusted and fearful and oh my God, I cannot wait till this over because you didn't have the information that shows you that this is a miracle that happens every time they come up out of the earth, every 13 to 17 years. The miracle is, is it the oldest living creature on earth? The miracle is, is they have medicine in their very bodies. Mm -hmm. They have medicine in their very bodies that even that that they leave behind, their maltings, is magical and impactful, radically impactful in the lives of humans. That even that that I leave behind, y'all can benefit from. If you know, right? 
Um, what else are the lessons that the cicada attempt to teach us? They represent, this is, this, this is what I learned today. The cicadas symbolize courage, immortality, resurrection. What do we say two hours ago about the very first card that we pulled? The apprentice of arrows, the brave herald of new thought. The apprentice of herald, uh, the brave herald, the apprentice of arrows, the brave herald of new thought. Look at the phoenix in the upright corner. What did I say about the phoenix? The phoenix represents death and resurrection. The phoenix represents the inevitability of evolutionary emergence. Raising up from the ashes of old, made anew. Huh? What did I say the phoenix represents? That her tears have the power to heal any wound, the phoenix. And here we go, two and a half hours later, talking about the wonderful, magnanimous cicada, right? She represents courage. She represents immortality, resurrection, spiritual ecstasy. That's a quote. She represents spiritual ecstasy. All she does every 13 to 17 years is emerge from the earth to have sex for a little while, to make a baby and go back on about her life. That's all she come out here to do is to have get a little, get a little ass. You understand? Have a little sex, make a baby and go on about back, go on back her, go on back to the earth, go on back her life to her life. Spiritual ecstasy harmony with the universe, synchronicity, and clever, uh, clever strategy. Clever strategy? The song of the cicada represents the revealing of secrets. Why? Because she's been unseen. She's been in the earth for 17 years, she comes out. Oh, that's the other thing she comes out to do. She comes to sing, to have sex, and to have a baby. To sing, to have sex, and to have a baby. That's it. That's the only reason she come up out the earth. And then she rests in the earth for 17 years. And she sings, if we care to listen instead of being annoyed. She sings the secrets of the deep to us. Yes, she does. And for a short period of time. It's just a short period of time that she's on the scene. And we spend the whole time in revile, not seeing the majesty of the moment, <laughs> not seeing the magic in the moment, not listening for the mysteries she's trying to reveal to us. That's why I need you to collect her song for me. MP3 files, Dropbox, however you needed to get it to me, Google Drive. But I need you guys to record her song for me. I need you guys to record her song for me. She is a representation of the period. She is a representation of all the radical possibilities for this conspiracy we're trying to create. It's so timely that she is emerging for the first time since 1803. We're perfectly positioned to experience her because this event will not happen again until 20, 22, 2245. The, the super brood that we are perfectly primed to experience in all its majesty while everybody else is telling you what? Be afraid. C cicada apocalypse. Oh my God. Oh my God. This is the shit I'm telling y'all about. How anything that we hear that is attempting to generate fear, paranoia, dismay, despair is attempting to rob you of your power in this moment. Every single thing that you hear that is based in fear, uncertainty, scariness, woefulness, despair, war, is attempting to rob you in this moment of the potential power that you can galvanize. This event will not happen again until 2245. She is coming to sing a song to us to reveal the mysteries of the deep. 
Who is the owner and the keeper of the secrets of the deep? It is Oya. This is her time. She posted the fuck up on the throne and has been since 2-20-2022. Two, since two, she been up in here. That's why you uncomfortable. That's why you scared to do shadow work. That's why you scared of that voice that tells you to go deeper. Go deeper. See. Go deeper. Hear. Go deeper. And here, the cicada, perfectly primed on this most magnanimous eclipse to reveal secrets to us if we care to listen. To give medicine to us if we care to receive it. Baby, I'm going to need to get jars of these goddamn cicada, cicada moltings from y'all. I'm going to need to get these songs from y'all. Mm-hmm. I, this is what it means to see. This is what it means to see. This is what it means to see. The seeing is simple if we do not bog it down. The seeing is simple if we do not confuse it. The seeing is simple. I say, ooh, cicada brood. I don't get fearful and shit. I'm like, ooh, this is interesting because the first thing I thought about was Chinese medicine. Ooh, the cicada bug is medicine. This is awesome. What do the natives have to say about the significance of the cicada bug? Not one reference from any culture did I find that they have any kind of terrible, terrible omens attached to the cicada. Not one, not nowhere. They don't harvest crop. I mean, they don't um, harm crops. They don't wreak havoc. They just emerge, sing, have sex, make babies, and go back into the earth. We just want you to know we up in here. Even when you can't see us for 30 years, motherfuckers, we going to survive even if y'all don't. We want y'all to know we up in here because we resilient. You understand? Because we immortal. You feel me? We older than everybody on here. You feel me? We represent spiritual ecstasy because all we do is when we come up, all we do is sing and have sex and make babies. We, Our whole existence is defined by spiritual ecstasy. Hmm? Be aware of the synchronicities that occur when we are present. Isn't that powerful? Isn't that a powerful fucking message? Y'all, I think cicadas is my new favorite creature. Do you understand? So anyway, this was fun. This was a lot of fun. So I'm going to remind you, book a reading with me. 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 Book a reading with me at releaseheartcenter at gmail.com. I am available all the time. I took the whole day off to prepare for this live. The whole day. So I'm going to work overtime tomorrow. But I worked. I took the whole day off to sit. Watching all this stuff, taking all these notes. I have a lot of notes. Some stuff I may give y'all on another day because some of the stuff was really cool and impactful and not like woeful or lamentful. Um, yeah, but book a reading with me. Book a reading. If you want to buy some hyper empowered goddess jewelry, Go to my Etsy store at www.daughteroftheFates. Fates is plural. DaughteroftheFates.etsy.com. www.daughteroftheFates.etsy.com. Purchase jewelry. Get your um, get your reading or your uh, whole wellness consult with me. Do that at Release Heart Center. Uh, Release Heart Center at gmail.com. Put in the subject header either consult or reading, I will get back to you. Um, a half hour reading is $85 and a full hour is $150. And, um, and then the wellness consult is one hour and I will give, I will send to you in, within five to seven days, a typed out list of recommendations, which are a thorough explanation of your diagnosis and how to adjust accordingly. Dietary, uh, recommendations, herb or medicinal recommendations, and lifestyle, uh, including exercise recommendations based on your five elements um, analysis of your whole health picture. Okay. So I think this is an opportune time for me to end. Yes. I will say thank you. 
Oh, for those who came late, if you watch anything on my YouTube channel, a very easy, effortless way to support the channel is to watch the ads all the way through. I know it's a pain in the ass. Several people have been like, girl, I got to walk out the room. I'm going to do it. I'm going to put it on mute. I got to walk out the room. Do what you got to do. Watch the ads. And that's not just for me. Any, I didn't know this until my page got monetized, monetized because they don't tell you that in mass anywhere. But the way that people are able to get um, ad revenue is for you to actually watch the ad all the way through when they come up on the video. So whenever you, that's a very easy, free way to support the revenue of my channel. So when the when the ads come up, mute it, go to another room, whatever, but let the ads play all the way through. I appreciate that. If anything that I said to you or any other video um, spoke to you, then please be aware all of the time those of you who have reached out to me because of the great cosmic mother or because of the Sybils, just know you don't even have to like me as an individual. If something that I said moved you, know it's the mother's will. Know it is her attempt to speak through, to, to speak to whomever she can, to speak through whomever is making themselves open to that. That is what I am doing. That I am consciously, daily doing that. I leave myself open for the mother to communicate to others through me. I do that. I pray that the mother's will is spoken through me. Nothing but her will is spoken through me. So if something moves you, it is the mother's will that it did. And if it moved you, it can move somebody else. Share whatever you can with others. Share it. Make a commitment. I'm going to post this video that spoke to me once this week. Or I'm going to share this with 10 people that I know. Whatever. This is the work. We have to seize possession of these mediums that we have access to to get her word out. This is not a coincidence. Because I ain't got I ain't got hardly no followers. I know people that's got a gang of followers. I got like 1,600 followers. So how is it that you find me? Because the algorithm is not on my side. So how is it that you found me? I hear people say that all the time. I don't know how I found you. I don't know how your shit came up on my page because because the algorithm is not on my side. So how did you find me? How did my video come into your life? Because I don't do the kind of work that I should in terms of posting, 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 posting. I haven't been doing lives every day like I had been. You feel me? How did you find me? Because it is the mother's will that you do. It, it, she trying to set this shit off. The only way that she can do that. How? What does the book say? What is? What does the uh, medicine woman inner guide book say? What does the the deck say? It over and over and over again. That I reiterate over and over and over again, sweetheart. It is only through a well rested and present you that I can do my best work. It is only through a well rested and present you that I can do my best work. So, be present. And let the mother have her way with you. And her way is to support this YouTube channel that drew you in in the first place. Watch the boring ads. Book the reading. Buy the jewelry. Any way that you support, quote, me as an entity is supporting the Temple of Evolutionary Emergence. We have a galactic, energetic jack move that we have to pull this motherfucking year. We have to do that. So support the channel, support the Temple of Evolutionary Emergence, support the work of the Temple of Evolutionary Emergence, get the reading, buy the jewelry, watch the boring ads, you understand? Put the do the little star things, do, do the little whatever, the little tabs on the bottom where you can, you know, you can put a, a dollar in the piggy bank or a, I don't know how that shit works. I haven't used it yet. But the little icons. Donate a dollar if this video moved you, if it helped you in any way, if it assisted you in the preparation of galvanizing the energy coming down the pike, attempting to be gifted to us on, on April 8th. Thank you. Love you for it. My name is Cassandra Faye Floyd, also known as the daughter of the fates, temple of the evolution, uh, founder of the Temple of Evolutionary Emergence. And I will see you again tomorrow.